become a three-time All-American wide receiver, and he's currently in possession of nine all-time Michigan school records. The ground attack is led by sturdy Lawrence Ricks, a senior who this afternoon should become only the seventh Michigan back to rush for a thousand yards. 39-year-old Leon Burtnett in his first year as head coach of Purdue. Scott Campbell, the latest in a long line of Purdue quarterbacks. The junior signal caller comes into the game with an even 5,000 yards in career passing yardage. Defensively, Purdue will be led by linebacker Mark Brown, a kid who's just three tackles away from a school single season record. It's Purdue against Michigan, NCAA football live on CBS. CAA football, the Michigan Wolverines versus the Purdue Boilermakers. Today's game is sponsored by U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. And by Chevrolet. Chevrolet is USA 1, and USA 1 is taking charge. There's a time in life for the young to say. It has become almost commonplace, but we've got another crowd of 100,000 plus here in Michigan Stadium and something on the line. A possible Rose Bowl berth for Michigan. Hello, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist here to call the play-by-play, -play, and it's a pleasure to welcome back home number nine, Dennis Franklin, who back in the mid-70s quarterback this Michigan team to 32-1. and one. I know you feel good about being back here. Absolutely, Vern. It's a pleasure to be back here. And the thing I, I think I miss most is the fans, you know. It's just a great, great place to play football. What about Purdue, Dennis? Three touchdown underdogs today. Well, I think Purdue has got to put maintain pressure on the Michigan defense. And by doing that, they need to get five yards minimum on first down. Secondly, they have to score offensively. They've got to get the football in the end zone and continue to put pressure in terms of points as well as moving the football. And thirdly, they've got to prevent the big play by Michigan. What about the Wolverines now? Well, the Wolverines have got to play mistake-free football. They did that last week against Illinois, and that was really the key why they won. Uh, secondly, offensively, they got to keep the offense on the football field. Uh, the best defense is a good offense. And finally, with their best kicking game of all time, they got to come out and play good on the kicking game. All right, it's Purdue against Michigan here before a crowd. We expect to reach 104,000. The visitors bust up yesterday from West Lafayette, Indiana, the Boilermakers of Purdue, and their head coach, Leon Burtnett. They are three and six for the year. They started off 1982 with five consecutive defeats, but they've come on strong, this young Purdue team. They have won three of their last four ball games, including a very impressive win, 16 to seven, over Iowa last week. Now then, it may be a moment until we see Michigan. Bo Schembechler is a great tactician, and he just might keep them in there. Why so? Well, Bo's the type of coach that likes to keep everything under control. He wants to dominate and make sure he goes over everything that's important and pertinent to this football game, and he's not going to sacrifice that to come out early or to come out on time, so to speak. So it may be a while, but hopefully he'll come out pretty soon. So you think it's simply a matter of him going over last-minute preparation? Absolutely. Right now. He wants to make sure he goes over all the important points and uh, uh, lets his players know the essential things to win this football game. Well, he didn't break the Here come the Wolverines. and Blues, 7-2 and two and 82. They started off 2-2 two and two with defeats to UCLA and Notre Dame after a win against Wisconsin. But they have an unblemished Big Ten record of seven wins and no defeats. It's quite simple. If they win today against Purdue, they're Rose Bowl bound for the 11th time in the school's history. It was back in 1902 that Michigan made its first appearance in the Rose Bowl. Matter of fact, that was the first Rose Bowl game, and they won that one over Stanford. Well, they would like to go back for the 11th time, and they can do it with a victory at home here today. 
and for 17 Wolverine seniors, this is their final home appearance in the maize and blue. Down in the field, the captains, number 50 is Paul Giergash, number 99, Robert Thompson, and number one, Anthony Carter. Let's listen to the coin toss. Wolverine captains making the trek toward midfield now where they will meet their Boilermaker counterparts. It is cloudy and cool today. A cold front swept through here yesterday. We expect a high of about 32 degrees with a wind out of the north. Robert Thompson, number 99, Paul Giergas, and the point guard. Bob Colbert. Yeah. We call it tails. It is a tail. Purdue has won the toss. You want the toss. You want the ball. Choice of goal to the top. Wow. You're going to kick that way. So the Boilermakers have won the toss and will receive. We'll be back for the opening kickoff. NCAA football. Purdue and Michigan live on CBS. Referee today is John Nealon, the umpire Dan Davey, the head linesman Wayne Meese, the line judge Don Langelo, field judge is Bob Colbert, and the back judge Chad DiStefano. It's cold, temperature 29, 31 degrees, 51% humidity, and the brisk breeze out of the northwest at 15 miles per hour. The forecast continued cloudy. We will have intermittent sunshine throughout the day. Haji Sheik, the senior out of Arlington, Texas, whose dad was a student here at uh, Michigan some years back and is now a professor at UTA, will kick off. Lloyd Hawthorne and Eric Jordan deep to receive for the white clad Boilermakers. John Nealon says, let's go. And we are. Lloyd Hawthorne, double to the 10. Paul Giergash, number 50 in Michigan, the senior linebacker, was the first one down. It'll be first and 10 at the 16-yard line for Purdue. Scott Campbell, a junior at quarterback. Rodney Carter and Mel Gray, the running backs. Wide receivers are Dave Rutherford and Steve Griffin. The offensive line, Cliff Benson, the tight end. Clavin Fields, Mike Brown, Paul Royer, Chris Prince, and Paul Alekna. Just across the 15-yard line, first down 10, Boilermakers. They need... Leon Burton had said to average better than five yards per first down if they're going to win the ball game. Split backs on first and ten. And Campbell will throw on the first down. Pops once across the middle, incomplete. Gergash is there with a hit. Number 50, and there is a flag on the far side of the field. So John Nealon will tuck it over. An eligible receiver downfield for you. That'll be lost it down and a tough way to start the game, Dennis Franklin. It certainly is, Vern. You don't want to come out, start, you know, right away and, and start to make mistakes. Uh, you want to get yourself established. But a lot of times as a player, you know, you still have the butterflies. You wait for that first, uh, first play to get them out. Well, we've got John Neal on mic, but that time didn't pick it up. Nonetheless, it's loss of down. And the ball is pushed back to the 11-yard line, or the, uh, yes, the 11-yard line. Defensively, Michigan, Carl Rose, Kevin Brooks, Al Sinchitz, Winfred Carraway, and Robert Thompson up front will graphically demonstrate that in a moment. Motion now, Joe Linville coming right left, handoff on the right side. Goes to Mel Gray, the junior uh, college transfer out of Williamsburg, Virginia, and the tackle is made by Mike Boren. Here's the defensive line, Winfred Carraway, Al Sinsich, and Dave Meredith, who has been replaced, by the way, by uh, Kevin Brooks. The linebackers are Robert Thompson, Paul Giergash, Mike Boren, and Carlton Rose. And the secondary, Marion Body, Jerry Burgai, Keith Bostick, an All-American, and Evan Cooper. Third down and 14. Tony Gant has come in as a fifth defensive back now for Michigan. They'll go with the five nickelbacks. This is a situation where Michigan will probably not uh, risk anything. They'll just sit back and uh, not allow Purdue to pick up the first down. Linville wide to the left side, and there's a flag that may have a delay of game call. An awfully rough start for Purdue. It is, as we said at the outset, a very young Purdue team. They have 18 freshmen on their travel roster. Here's John Nealon. Well, we're having problems with the referee's mic, so nonetheless, it's a delay of game. Five more march to the south. 
and a look at Leon Burtnett, 13 years an assistant at seven different schools. He's 39 years of age, was Jim Young's defensive coordinator at Purdue for five years, and in his first year as head coach. Third and 19. Campbell with three wide receivers, Benson in motion. Pops it out, clock. Eric Jordan, first down, out to the 32-yard line. The senior from Las Vegas, Nevada, who has played both defensive back and tailback this year. Look at it again. You can see here what's happening. Look at the linebackers dropping very deep. Now, Jordan, number 20, is going to release and come across the middle. And now it's just a matter of great speed and breaking a couple of tackles, which he does here. And he knows where that first down marker is. That's a big play for Purdue. Broke the tackle first of Paul Gergash, number 50, and secondly of Evan Cooper, number 21. First and 10 for new at the 33-yard line. Twin set to the left side. Draw play. Jordan, two yards. Al Sinsich, a sophomore out of Cleveland, number 53, made the tackle. Well, they are not averaging anywhere close to five yards on first down. But they continue to pick up, as long as they can pick up that uh, all-important third down to get the first down, it really doesn't matter. But if they, if they come out, Vern, and they, uh, and they do pick up the five yards on first down, what it does is it takes the pressure off on second down. That gives you an opportunity to pass as well as run. And that's the type of team that uh, Purdue is. Scott Campbell came into the game throwing 167 passes without an interception. And he's thrown two today. Campbell will throw it again. Cliff Benson, the tight end, leading receiver. First down, Purdue. All the way to the 48. Robert Thompson and Mike Boren made the tackle. That is Benson's 35th catch this year. And they move the chains to the north again. Benson is their leading receiver, and uh, Campbell really likes to go to Benson in key situations. And I think that's a good point because uh, the Michigan defense is very vulnerable in the middle. You'll find that uh, throughout the afternoon there's an open zone in the middle of the Michigan defense. First down, 10, a handoff to the fullback. This is Rodney Carter, a freshman, number 46, out of Elizabeth, New Jersey. And the twin linebackers in Michigan, Paul Giergash and Mike Boren, made the tackle. Not so cold that they don't keep, uh, that they don't have 104,000 here. Here's the season record for Purdue. Those five consecutive losses, then two wins over Northwestern and Michigan State. The loss to Ohio State and the big win last week over Iowa, 16 to 7. It'll be second down, eight, Purdue, but they have crossed midfield for the first time. Twin receivers to the left side, Steve Griffin and Joe Lindo. Campbell pops it back again. Good protection. Right side, caught Benson, first down. 6'2", 235 round junior out of Robbins, Illinois. Evan Cooper made the tackle, but not before Purdue moves the change once again. Another big first down for Purdue. Now, Michigan's defensive secondary, you know, they're led by uh, Keith Bostic, number 13. But what they try to do is they'll give you that open zone at 12, 15 yards down the field. And uh, against UCLA, Michigan was burned a lot deep. And since then, they have not allowed wide receivers to run deep patterns on them. So you'll find an open zone about 5, 10 yards down the line, down the field on the sidelines. First down, 10, Purdue at the 39. Play fake, and Campbell pops it short again to Benson. Fumble, Michigan has it. Mike Boren, number 40. by Mike Boren and the tackle. And the senior linebacker has given uh, Michigan its first turnover of the game. And they go on offense at their own 31. The quarterback is Steve Smith in the backfield freshman Dan Rice and senior tailback Lawrence, Lawrence Ricks, number 46. Operating from the eye, both wide receivers, Anthony Carter and Vincent Dean wide right. Here's Ricks. Tries to break a tackle and does. Picks up Ford at the 35-yard line. Matt Hernandez, number 71, made the tackle for Purdue. Ricks needs six yards to cross the 1,000-yard barrier. He got four on that carry. 
Steve Smith, Eddie Garrett, Lawrence Ricks, Anthony Carter, and Vincent Bean. And that should be Dan Rice instead of Eddie Garrett in the backfield. Craig Dunaway, Doug James, Stephon Humphreys, Tom Dixon, Jerry DiOrio, and Rich Stringer. The offensive line. Second down, eight. Ricks again. Ricks has now become the seventh running back to gain a thousand yards more or, or more for Michigan. Here you see uh, Mark Brown, uh, number 59, the leading tackler in the Big Ten. You can see what his job is. That's to come up, fight off that interference, get good pursuit, and go after the running back. Here he makes a good tackle on Lawrence Ricks. Now, Mark Brown needs only two more tackles to set a single season record for solo tackles for Purdue. Third down, short. Be close. David Fry, number 60, and Mark Brown helped out. Here's the Purdue defensive line. Fry, Hernandez, Wimberly, Chris Scott, and Andy Gladstone up front. Brock Spack, which I think is a great name for a linebacker. <laughs> that hurts when you say it. Yeah. Donnie Anderson, Derek Taylor, Bob Lashley, and Ray Wallace in the defensive secondary. They'll stretch the chain and see if he got it. Yep. First down for the Mason Blue. What a list of running backs. Ron Johnson, Rob Lytle, Butch Woolfolk. Those are some of the guys in whose company Lawrence Ricks now finds himself. First and 10, Michigan. No score in the game. We've got 9.45 to go first quarter. Lawrence, Lawrence Ricks again. Did a little stutter step at the line and picked up about eight. Tackle made by David Fry, number 60. He shared the running back honors with Woolfolk when he was a sophomore, and then Butch had that terrific Rose Bowl game and went into last season as a starter and went well over 1,000 yards and became a first-round draft choice. But this year, as a senior, Lawrence Ricks has it all to himself. And he's not a big guy, Dennis. No, he's not. He's very uh, very short, stocky, and uh, extremely strong, Brian. 18 yards on four carries so far today. He'll get it again. Andy Gladstone, number 86, and Mark Brown made the tackle. But they'll move the chains for a second time for Michigan. I think uh, Bo's going to be uh, content with uh, just running off tackle both ways uh, with Ricks uh, until he feels that uh, Purdue may be lulled to sleep uh, in the secondary. Uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised now with good field position around the 50-yard line that they try to come up and maybe fake it to Ricks and throw to Carter. Let's see if they throw on first down. You called it. Looking deep for Vincent Bean and Carter. Carter's out there. Double coverage. They, they finally faked it. They've been throwing to They've been uh, running off tackle all day. But you can see just a beautiful catch by Carter there. That's his seventh of the year. He needs two more to tie elbow right for an NCAA record. The kick from Ali Hashishik is up and good. Michigan strikes with the pass to the All-American AC. They lead it 7-0. 8.40 to go first quarter. We'll be back in a moment. Here's another look at the great catch. Look at that uh, over-the-shoulder concentration. Uh, the Purdue defender was beat, but Carter really uh, seldom drops a pass, and that uh, was a good call on Michigan's part. Big play. They go up 7-0. Six plays in the scoring drive. Here's Hajishi kicking it deep, and it'll be taken at the two. Back to the 20. Steve Griffin, number two, a freshman out of Miami, Florida. Counter punches. Tom Hassel, number 48, made the tackle. Griffin, one of the four freshmen who are starting for Purdue. Well, Anthony Carter playing his final home game said it means a lot here. Back when he was trying to decide where to go to school, he visited Texas. 
visited Florida State, visited Michigan, cast his lot with the Wolverines, and has become all world. <laughs> First down and 10. Scott Campbell back in the cockpit. Purdue did move the ball until the fumble. Here's the handoff to Mel Gray. Gray on the right tackle and squirts forward for a good gain before the tackle is made by Evan Cooper. He's out of Williamsburg, Virginia and is by far the leading ground gainer for the Boilermakers this year. Transferred from Coffeeville Junior College, which is perennially a strong JC program. Matter of fact, Gray attended the same high school as did Ron Springs. And there's a look at Steve Smith, who has really come on strong, Dennis, in the last five games. He has, uh, Vernon. The key is that he doesn't really try to force the ball into areas where uh, it's tough to throw anymore. And that's really uh, been the difference in his performance. Then he'll get to the fullback, Rodney Carter, the freshman out of Elizabeth, New Jersey, and Kevin Brooks, his sophomore. Number 52 made the tackle. It'll be third down. I think it's uh, important to uh, reiterate some of the, the, the strategies that we felt at the beginning of the show. Purdue, they got the ball the first time, and they did move it. But uh, if you remember, uh, we, we felt like uh, they got to get that ball in the end zone. So uh, for them to move down the field is not significant enough and it will not win this football game. they got to get it in the end zone. They have gone eight quarters without scoring offensively. They got three field goals and a punt return for their scores last week. Here's Campbell, we'll throw it. Cliff takes it. That big horse tucked it all the way to the 44. Keith Bostick and Evan Cooper make the stop. It's a 28-yard gain for Purdue. And this is set up by the little fake. What's the fake to Mel Gray right there? You see the linebackers come up. So now you get a chance to, to beat the linebacker to the tight end. It was excellent behind the, the back catch by uh, Benson, 81 right there. And at that point, he was in the secondary in a big game. First down, Purdue. Scott Campbell, five out of six for 86 yards now. Benson has caught four for 60, which gives him 38 for the season. First and 10 at the 44, 6.58 to go first quarter. Michigan leads it by seven. Play fake, Robert Thompson rushing. Here comes the strong safety blitz, and they beat him with a pass to Mel Gray. Number 32, Carlton Rose, the outside linebacker, made the tackle. Keith Bostick, number 13, the strong safety, was coming on a delayed blitz that time. That's true, Vern, and he, uh, he'll do that quite a bit. He's an All-American, a big kid uh, that can come up and uh, run support as well as uh, cover the tight end when he's called upon to do it. 6.27 to go first quarter. Michigan on a 50-yard touchdown catch from Anthony Carter off the arm of Steve Smith has taken a 7-0 lead. Purdue was as far as the 31-yard line on their opening drive before they fumbled. Two wide receivers left side, Griffin and Joe Menville, split backs. Hand off Mel Gray. Has a seam. Watch him run. He's close for the first. He was an ankle tackle away from a huge game. And Jerry Burgai, number 15, made the stop. See if he got enough. I don't quite think so. But they look impressive moving the ball. Yes, they are moving the football. Uh, uh, Michigan uh, doesn't have uh, their typical uh, top rated uh, defense. Uh, they're vulnerable, uh, they're smaller, they use, uh, they have great speed on, uh, on defense, but uh, they have given up a lot of yards this year. High formation, third and about a yard. Quarterback keeper Campbell, and I believe he got it. You believe that they're vulnerable deep, don't you? Michigan, that is. Yes, I do. Uh, I happen to see the uh, UCLA-Michigan game, and uh, they were beaten deep quite a bit, in fact, uh, most of the afternoon. And uh, I was a little surprised that uh, Illinois last week did not throw one deep pass against Michigan. Interesting, most teams have not gone deep on Bo Schimba. And, uh, and the reason for that is, uh, now anyway, the, the defensive backs, they line up 12, 10 yards deep off of uh, the offensive receivers. So that right away tells you, you got a cushion of five or six yards, and it's tough to beat somebody deep when they're already five or six yards deep. Bostic is coming on the blitz. The handoff to Mel Gray, and Bostic makes the hit, number 13. Had it been a pass, he was making a beeline for Scott Campbell. On the draw play, he went right at Mel Gray. 4.57 to go first quarter, 7-0. There's a look at the All-American strong safety out of Ann Arbor. Matter of fact, he played for Pioneer High School and Holloway Field. Their, uh, their home field is uh, just diagonal here, about 400 yards. Yep, right across the street almost. Haven't been here before. I went in there and thought, that doesn't need 100,000. <laughs> it's a little smaller than I thought it would be. <laughs> Second down, six, Purdue. They trail by seven. They are at the Michigan 30-yard line. Bostic sneaking up again. We'll see if he's coming. He is not. Campbell with great protection. Nobody open. Now Robert Thompson has it. He's a 
Walter Sr. out of Blue Island, Illinois. 6'3", 221. Well, what happens here is uh, Campbell decides that nobody's open. He really has enough time to get rid of. You can see there he pumped fake once, but uh, Thompson broke off of his uh, uh, the offensive block and made a great play and uh, caught Campbell back deep. The thing that Campbell should have done, I felt, was just throw the football away. He really didn't have anybody open, and you don't want to lose that uh, important yardage at this point in the game. Robert Thompson has 12 tackles for loss so far this year. Shotgun on third and 20 from the Michigan 43. Four-man rush. In complete. Bounced once before Bostic got it. Intended for Mel Gray. We thank you. So the drive will stall with 332 remaining in the first quarter. And that's brought them to their feet here at Michigan Stadium. And on the kick now for the first part of the day is Matt Kinzer, number 28. He's averaging 40.3 yards per punt this year. A sophomore out of Markle, Indiana. Evan Cooper is deep. Edge in the kicking game decidedly goes to Michigan. Bad kick. Good result. Out of bounds at the 23. 20-yard kick. Michigan has gotten the ball back at their own 23-yard line, and they lead it 7 to nothing. Michigan has a 7 nothing lead, and the football first down 10 at their own 23, a 7 nothing lead. Backs in the eye, Steve Smith, under Tom Dixon center. Lawrence Ricks again, pops it free, foot race. One man can beat him. Ray Wallace saved the touchdown. between Jerry DiOrio and Stephon Humphreys for 46 yards. You can see the hole there, Vern, and that's, uh, that's what every running back uh, looks for instead of having to work for it all the time and running over people. It's kind of nice every now and then to have a big hole and just take off. First down 10 at the 25-yard line. Michigan leads at 7-0. Ricks again. He's got to be pooped. This time he's hit by Mark Brown and Chris Scott, numbers 59 and 99. A 46-yard rumble over the left side of the offensive line. Now let's go to New York for an NCAA update with Brett Musburger. Bert Clemson strikes first against Maryland in that battle for the ACC. It'll be Epley on the pitch outside to Austin. Clemson leads by seven. Back to Bird. Okay, Brent, thank you very much. Our score is also 7-0. Here's Rex caught for a loss back to the 31-yard line. Mark Brown, number 59, who has set a new single-season record. He has beaten the mark by James Looney, and he now is over the 130-yard mark, or 30 uh, tackle mark for the year. Well, well, the thing that makes this play is Brown this time stunts, and you can see him come through the line of scrimmage. Number 59 right there. He just came right through. Nobody touched him, but he stunted, and he can read that. It's him against the the uh, tailback, and when they go off tackle, he's going to have to do that more often. He's going to have to feel that read and come through and try to tackle Ricks. Carter wide to the left. They look for him. He's got it. Just amazing. The guy is just amazing. He's 5'11, 165 pounds. And he got the first down. He knew exactly where to get to, Vern. I don't know uh, what else to, to say to try to describe him. He's just a just a great football player. Anthony Carter from Riviera Beach, Florida. Bo Schembechler in his 14th year as head coach, and Carter will get a rest. Sim Nelson comes in as an extra tight end on first down 10. He wears number 95. Dan Rice and Lawrence Ricks in the eye. Sky, uh, Steve Smith, the quarterback. Purdue showing the blitz. And here come the linebackers. It's Ricks. Gets a great block from Chris Prince. And he's inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. David Fry made the tackle. It was Stephon Humphreys rather than Chris Prince, number 76, who really opened the way for the run of Lawrence Ricks. Sometimes injuries take place other than on the football field, huh? Now 
Carter comes back in. 7-0 score, 135 to go in the first quarter of play. Carter will go wide to the left and be matched against Donnie Anderson. You're looking at Lawrence Ricks, who's been the workhorse in the backfield. Second down and two. Ricks inside the five by a nudge. Matt Hernandez made the tackle, number 71. And Derek Wimberly, number 89. First down, first and goal. Look at Hernandez, a senior who is from East Detroit, Michigan, as a matter of fact. Playing close to home. But the Wolverines knocking on the door for the second time. They scored on a 48-yard pass from Steve Smith to Anthony Carter. Carter goes wide to the left. And it's a double tight end set once again with Dunaway and Nelson to touchdowns. Ricks. Touchdown. by Purdue here, and uh, Michigan's offensive line just blows him right off the line of scrimmage, and before uh, Lawrence Ricks is touched, he's in the end zone, and I, I gotta tell you, they look like they're smelling those roses. He went 46 to set up the touchdown, he went three to get him into sixth touchdown of the year. Rich Hewlett will hold, and Ali Hajashik will try and make it 14-0. Which he has done. The Wolverines are in command. They lead Purdue 14 to nothing. We've got 53 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. Rick Sharp and John McDonough and Steve Shear sitting by in Bloomington, Indiana, getting ready for that game tomorrow between Indiana and the touring Russian squad. It ought to be fun, and it'll be brought to you live on CBS tomorrow afternoon. Ali Hajashik, the senior place kicker out of Arlington, Texas. We'll kick it off. Steve Griffin and Eric Jordan are the two deep men. This will be the freshman Steve Griffin, and he will run it back. But not far. Tavel made by Mike Mallory. Now let's go to New York and Brent Musburger for this NCAA update. Burn third and short for Oklahoma against Missouri. Kelly Phelps here will just go for the first down on the sneak. Bounces free. The safety blows the tackle. He's on his way. A 37-yard Oklahoma touchdown. They lead 14-0. Back to Burn. Well, oh, Brad, it sounds similar to our game. Oklahoma on top 14-0. Michigan leads it here. 14-0 over Purdue. Boilermakers have moved it. But they have one turnover on their opening drive and then were forced to fight. Here's Campbell back to throw again. Fires it out for Eric Jordan, number 20. He's got a first down to the 25. Fumble. Michigan ball. That's a 6-2 sophomore from Cleveland, Ohio. Al Sinsich after Mike Boren made the hit. You can see the pass here to uh, Gordon, number 20. And uh, he fails to put the ball away. He's hit by three different people, including 89, uh, Carlton Rove. And then uh, Sitchich comes over and gets on the ball. That's the kind of things that Michigan has had a lot of success with, creating uh, turnovers and uh, putting themselves in good field position. And they did it once again. The strike on the first play. Smith pops it out. Caught by Yates. Gets a block from Carter of sorts. And he may have enough for a first down at the 14. Little rooster blocked by Anthony. When you're 5'11, 165, they don't expect you to go after those big guys. Well, <laughs> it would only be smart on Anthony's part to stay away from the big guys. There's no sense in getting yourself hurt. Catch is made by Dan Rice, the freshman fullback, who has been a starter since the second game of the year. They expected Gerald Ingram to be the starter this year, but he's been hurt most of the season. Greg Hawthorne started one, and Rice took over. It's first and, uh, first and uh, ten. Here's Lawrence Ricks. To the 10. With 14 seconds remaining in the first quarter, Mark Brown made the tackle. That should be the final play of the first 15. It has been an old Michigan first 
15 minutes. They have a 14-0 lead. Back for the second quarter in just a moment. It was the first quarter that started for such promise for Leon Burtnett, the head coach of Purdue. They drove it to the Michigan 31, but fumbled, and it's gone south since. Wolverines have the ball with a second down at the 10-yard line and a 14-0 lead. And off to Lawrence Rex, caught at the line of scrimmage and dropped after a gain of six feet by Derek Taylor, number three. Bert Lundquist and former Michigan quarterback Dennis Franklin here at Michigan Stadium on a cold, overcast November afternoon. But the Wolverines have heated things up with two touchdowns, a 48-yard touchdown catch from Anthony Carter, a three-yard touchdown run from Lawrence Ricks, and I know that Don James and the Huskies and Darrell Rogers and Arizona State team are watching this one with some degree of anticipation. I think Purdue is going to have to make a big play here. They're going to have to blitz and do something. Here's Smith. Batted down. Well, there's a big play. Number 89, Derek Wimberly, a freshman out of Popolaka, Florida. And number 60, David Fry and Ali Hajashik will come on. Now, if he kicks this field goal, Ali Hajashik, as you look at Steve Smith heading to the sideline, will set a single season field goal record for Michigan. He has 11 out of 14 this year. He shares the record with Don Wood right now. If this is good, he's in the record book by himself with 12 of the year. It'll be a 27-yard kick for the senior. Welcome to the record book, Ali. The turnover is converted into a three-point play, and Michigan has gone out on top 17 to nothing over Purdue. It is a venerable place built back in the early 1900s. It seats 101,000. They jam more than that in here. And Dennis Franklin, it must have been a thrill to play before this many folks every game at home. Well, I'll tell you, Vernon, as a sophomore, when I first came out of the tunnel the first time, I was really scared to death. And uh, the butterflies never went away the entire game. But uh, as you get used to it, it's a big advantage to have the opportunity to play in front of so many people. And it usually intimidates the opposition. Well, you were nervous then. You don't appear to be now. Well, you know, I'm not down there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Ali Hajashik will kick off. He has just kicked his 31st career field goal. And that also is a Michigan record. And 12 this season. He's 12 out of 15. His dad, as we said, was a student here. And is now a professor of engineering at the University of Texas at Arlington. This one should be returned. It'll be taken by Eric Jordan into the wind at the 10. He fumbles the ball. Picked up on the bounce. That is the first decent thing that has happened for Purdue since their opening drive. Steve Griffin had it pop right into his arms. Now, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York for another NCAA update. Vern, Oklahoma does not read the defensive keys here properly against Missouri. And out of a power right formation, Missouri gets right back in this football game. It is now 14-7. Let's go back to Vern Lundquist. Thank you, Brent. That's a key one, of course, because Oklahoma still has Nebraska left the day after Thanksgiving, and you'll see that game live on CBS. Well, the Orange Bowl host Burton. First down, 10, Purdue. They trail 17-0. High formation. Campbell will throw. Comes the rush from Thompson. He pops it in the flat. Caught. By Rodney Carter, a freshman running back out of Elizabeth, New Jersey. And the tackle is made by Carl Rose. All right, good hit. Good football. Campbell now 8 out of 10 for 110 yards. And he's gone 177 passes now without throwing an interception. The NCAA record, by the way, is 198. And that was set some years ago by Jerry Rome, who's the offensive coordinator at Seattle. Take a look at the first quarter stats. Well, you can see that uh, Purdue has... Uh, they in this football game and uh, the difference is the two turnovers uh, they've been able to move the football uh, very well but uh, they've come up with those turnovers and given Michigan good field position with opportunities to, to score early and that's really been the difference and Dennis Purdue has now gone nine quarters without an offensive touchdown they were waxed by Ohio State 38 to 6 and won last week 16 to 7 but three field goals Return for the score. Split backs on first down and 10 from the 29 yard line. Handoff goes to Bell Gray, circles to his left, wiggles his way to a gain of three before Mike Boren, the linebacker number 40, made the tackle. As we said, all it would take is a Michigan win, and they go to the Rose Bowl for the 11th time. 
And sitting out in Tempe, Arizona right now are the teams of Arizona State and Washington. They play tonight, and it's quite simple. If Arizona State wins that game tonight, they're the host team in the Rose Bowl for the first time. If Washington wins and they're underdogs by four, they then must beat Washington State next week at Washington State to go back to the Rose Bowl and defend the uh, championship they won last year against Iowa. Here's Campbell back to throw. Left side, drunk. Intended for Rodney Carter, the freshman. Those are the, I'm sorry, Brian. Those are the little things that uh, make the difference between just being a, uh, a an average team, so to speak, and a really good football team. You, you can't allow yourself to come into the football game and not concentrate on things like covering up the football and uh, not fumbling the football. And a simple thing like catching it. It's just a matter of concentration. And you got to come in here prepared and ready to do that. Third down and seven. 17 nothing. Michigan leads. Ball at the 33-yard line. Campbell will throw a four-man rush. Screen pass. Pops it out. Mel Gray. He doesn't have any help, so he's got to do this on his own, but he picks up the first down at the 45. Tackle is finally made by number 13, Mel Bostic. Interesting screen pass in that there were no blockers for him. Well, it was a middle screen, and uh, I think that they were trying to spread out the Michigan defense by sending the linemen both ways away from the screen itself. And uh, they really only needed to pick up five or six yards, and uh, Campbell did a good job of getting the ball to Gray, and uh, at that point, he just turned it on and picked up the first down himself. Campbell began today with 5,000 yards career passing, and he's now picked up 123. And he's moved into second place in front of Mike Phipps and behind Mark Herman. Left side, man is open, Rice. He's got a first down, gets a block from Benson, and they are at the Michigan 43. It's David Rutherford instead of Rice, Dave Rutherford number 48 instead of 46, a senior out of Tampa, Florida. That's his 17th catch of the year. Ball, Alekna number 69, the right tackle just behind him. Well, that's the area we talked about, Vern, that uh, the Michigan defense is vulnerable. You can see from up here that he was wide open. There wasn't a man within five yards of him. And, uh, you know, if I were to tell Purdue one thing is to keep attacking that zone in particular. High formation on first down. They're moving it again. Thompson's coming. Campbell shakes it. Pops it out. Rice. To the 33, Rodney Carter, rather. Watch the rush here of Robert Thompson, number 99. Number 99 coming in from the left side of your screen right there. Now watch Campbell. He stays cool and uh, realizes that he can get away still. And then he, he finds his uh, running back, 46, Carter. And uh, Carter does a good job of getting himself up the field and picking up good yards. Second down and short. Remember the first start Scott Campbell had? Notre Dame National Television. Mark Herman gets hurt. And he has to start the thing and played quite well as a freshman. He's a junior now. Second and short. The new trails by 17. Mel Gray, first down to the 30-yard line. Junior out of Williamsburg, Virginia, is tackled by Mike Boren and Winfred Carraway. You know, Vern, uh, Michigan has already gone up 17 zip, but uh, I sat here in the stands, like I said before, against UCLA when Michigan played them, and they came out early, and they scored three quick touchdowns. It was 21 nothing, and nobody in this stadium would have thought that UCLA could come back, and uh, Purdue still has momentum. They are moving the football, and all they have to do is start getting the football in the end zone, and we got ourselves a good football. Game. Is Michigan susceptible particularly to the pass? They certainly are. I mean, uh, you've seen other teams uh, 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 this year throw the football very effectively on them, and uh, Purdue can do it as well. There's Mel Gray, number 32. He fi tried to get the block from Steve Griffin and didn't read it particularly well because as Griffin laid the block, Gray cut to his left right into it. Marion Body, number three, a senior out of Detroit, made the tackle. But this is their deepest penetration now, and it comes with 11.04 to go in the first half. Quick reset. They moved the ball to the Michigan 31 following the open kickoff, fumbled the ball. Michigan got a 48-yard touchdown pass to Anthony Carter to go up 7-0. Then Lawrence Ricks ran for 46 to set up a 3-yard touchdown run. That made it 14-0. The fumble recovery at the 30 resulted in an Ali Hajashik field goal, and that's where we stand at 17-zip. Split backs again. Here comes the Michigan blitz. Bostick is on his way. Campbell gets rid of it, diving catch at the 12. Dave Rutherford, a six-foot senior wide receiver, number 48. It's another first down. 
That's right. I've forgotten about that 21 nothing Michigan lead in the UCLA game. to go in the first half of play. 17 to nothing. Rudy May started that hand-holding <laughs> practice, I think, when he was with Baltimore. I wouldn't want to take that. <laughs> Gamble, handoff, Gray, going left. To the nine-yard line. And Paul Giergash, number 50, made the tackle. For Mel Gray, that's the eighth carry for 32 yards. And a look at Robert Thompson, number 99, and Kevin Brooks, number 52. Mel Gray, by way of Coffeyville Junior College. Came in with 782 yards. Had thought about going to Pittsburgh, and then at the last minute decided to go instead of Purdue. It'll be second down and seven, 9.39 to go first half. Flips it out to the five. It's Rodney Carter just short of the end zone. And Jerry Burgai saved six. Watch, watch the fake here by Campbell. You can see all the Michigan defenders go inside because they thought that Campbell was going to hand the football off. And he came up and got the ball out to uh, Carter, 46 there. But he was denied the end zone. That was a good call by Purdue. They've spread it around now. Campbell has uh, completed four to Benson, two to Gray, three to Carter, two to Rutherford, and two to Eric Jordan. So he has used five different receivers already here in the first half. It's first and goal at the one. And timeout has been called by Purdue. 9.05 remaining in the first half of play. The Boilermakers with their best threat of the first half. They're trying to get back in the ball game, and they'll try to do so when we come back. 39-year-old Leon Burknett out of Meade, Kansas. That's his hometown. Head coach of Purdue, and the Boilermakers have the first to go from the one. Double tight end set. Motion now from Bruce Crink, number 37. It's Gray. Got it. Touchdown. J.C. Kidd from Williamsburg, Virginia gets his sixth touchdown of 1982. And Purdue chomps away at the margin. They've shaved it to 11 now at 17 to 6. And the Boilermaker Band is here, along with Boilermaker Pete, part of the crowd of 104,000 or so. Tim Clark is on to try the extra point. He's 19 of 20 for the year. He lost half of his right foot in a lawnmower accident when he was six years old. So he wears the Tom Dempsey type shoe, and I know out in California, Ben Agajan is saying, all right, way to go. It is good. The lead has been shaved to 10. We've got eight minutes and 58 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Michigan will get the ball when we return. 28 seconds to go in the first half. Purdue has moved the ball for the second time here in the first half of play. But for the first time, they were able to punch it in, and that is their first touchdown offensively in nine quarters plus. 82-yard drive in 12 plays, highlighted by the throwing of Scott Campbell. And Walt Trapeza, number six, a senior out of Goshen, Indiana, will kick it off. He's a left-footed kickoff specialist for Purdue. Gary Smith and Anthony Carter are deep, and Carter... Oh, look at this. That won't be returned. Forget it. Oh, put another three on the board. Among Anthony Carter's records, he is averaging something like 17.8 yards in all-purpose rushing, returning, and receiving. And he's two yards ahead of the record set by Theo Bell for a career. Here's a touchdown. Byrne, there's a look at the, uh, the last touchdown per by Purdue. Really a key touchdown for them. Now they get some momentum. They feel that they can score. They know they can score in Michigan. It's a big touchdown for them. Lawrence Rex. To the 20-yard line. Tackle is made by David Fry. Ricks has now carried 13 times for 90 yards, 14 times. So he has been a workhorse here in the first. We expected that, though. Thought that they would run Lawrence Ricks. And he's over 1,000 yards for the season. 8.34 to go, first half, no gain last play. Carter comes wide to the left. 
where he's matched against Don Anderson. Smith for the day, three of four, and will throw on second down. Pops it across the middle, Craig Dunaway, the tight end, first down. Brock Spack, number 58, made the tackle, but not before Dunaway had rumbled up the middle and picked up another first and 10. That guy's at sea level and taking oxygen. <laughs> Looks a little like E.T. 8-10 to go, first half. 17-7. Michigan on top. Carter comes wide left. He's caught two. One for a touchdown. Ricks again. Ray Williams, one of the four freshmen starting for Purdue, made the tackle. And the Roses are abundant here at Michigan Stadium. Imagine it's a little warmer in Pasadena today than it is right here. Let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Ricks has now carried 15 times for 99 yards. He had 177 last week against Illinois. That was his uh, second best day in a Wolverine uniform at 184 against California two years ago. Oh, what a hit. What a hit for Mark Brown. What a hit by the senior linebacker out of Los Angeles. And they're letting him go. He's uh, just free to do it, what he wants here. He can read the offensive line, and when he sees a full, fullback come up, watch him just come up and bang away. Great anticipation on that play by Mark Brown. Dan Rice carried the ball, but not for much. It'll be third down and one at the 44-yard line with 6.55 to go. Michigan jumped out to a 17-0 lead, and then Purdue shaved it to 17-7. That's where we are now. Smith, Ricks, first down. One down to the 36-yard line before Bob Lashley hauls him down. Getting a little trap play in that offensive line up the middle. Okay, watch the linebacker. You can see Brown this time. He overruns the play. 59, he overran it. Now you see no linebackers there. And when Ricks broke through the line of scrimmage, there was no linebackers to tackle him, and that's why he picked up such great yardage on that play. 119 yards in the first half, and Ricks will get a rest. Kerry Smith takes his place. It's first and 10 Michigan at the Purdue 36-yard line. He's susceptible now. They'll not pass it this time. Here's Kerry Smith to the 30-yard line. Derek Wimberly, number 89, and Mark Brown make the tackle. And a look at Steve Smith, the senior or junior signal caller out of Grand Blanc, Michigan. Took over after John Wangler had graduated. Another of the All-American quarterbacks here in Michigan is up 1-4 uh, above us, Rick Leach. That's right. He's uh, doing radio broadcasting for a local station here. There's a look at the comparisons for the day. The passing uh, stats go to Purdue, and the rushing, of course, to Michigan. It's second down and five. Smith will throw, looks for Carter. Pops it out for Anthony. Batted away. Intercepted. Don Anderson, number 15, has picked off his fourth pass of 1982. And he had the ball played brilliantly. For Steve Smith, that is only his second interception in the last five games. Well, the problem here is that Smith throws the ball. You can see it wobbling there in the air, and it really took too long to get out of there, to get out there. But Anderson just did a magnificent job of concentrating on the ball as well as covering Carter one-on-one. -on -one. And I got to tell you that the tight end, uh, Craig Dunaway, did an excellent job of coming back and making the tackle because Anderson would have went all the way for a touchdown had he not done that. 5.35 to go first half. Campbell pops it across the middle. Fumble, Michigan's ball. Paul Gergash and Al Simsich. It's the senior linebacker, the three-year starter, number 50, who made the recovery after Simsich made the hit. You can see here what a great tackle. Uh, he, he actually tack tackled the football. That time he actually tackled the football out of Carter's hands, and uh, Michigan defense is is taught to you know try to cause turnovers and try to do those types of things. And that time they were lucky to uh, get Purdue to turn the football right back over to him. Third fumble recovery by the Wolverines here in the first half. Lawrence Ricks breaks 
the tackle. And Knights inside the 40 to the 38. Ray Wallace made the tackle. Rick's 17th carry in the first half, 127 yards. 5.08 to go in the first half, and the clock running. They even out the turnovers in the last two plays. Anthony Carter and Vincent Bean both go wide to the right side. On second down and short. A need to just two. It'll be Ricks again. Is he having an average day or what? He's having a great day, but uh, uh, Ricks, what's happening? Uh, Purdue on defense. Uh, uh, Brock's back, number 58 and 59, Mark Brown. The linebackers, they keep overrunning that play, and uh, Ricks does a good job of cutting back behind them, and once he does that, he's really in as a secondary, Vern. That's a 19-yard gain for Lawrence Ricks, 146 yards in the first half. At the 20, it's first down 10. Ricks gets a rest. Kerry Smith is back in. Here's Kerry Smith to the 14-yard line before Mark Brown makes the tackle. 4.22 to go first half. It's 17-7. to And now let's go back to Brent Musburger in New York for this NCAA update. Burn Maryland gets back into it against Clemson. They'll go to their freshman fullback, Badana Heck, and behind a beautiful block by his halfback. He then powers the rest of the way. It is now 14-7. Back to Burn. That's a heck of a ball game, and we've got the makings of one here. If Purdue could quit turning the ball over. 17-7, Michigan, second down and four. Kerry Smith again. One man to beat. At the one. He was knocked off his feet at the one. You can see Smith has uh, the great running ability as well as uh, Lawrence Ricks. Watch him make the cut right here, break a tackle. He makes a good cut inside right there. You can see him make the moves. And he gets all the way down to, uh, to the goal line. You be the judge whether or not he got in. He came into the game averaging 8.1 yards per carry, and that's exactly where he is now, 3 for 24. He's still the tailback. Steve Smith, touchdown. the touchdown from a yard out. It's 23 to 7. And so the fumble recovery is converted into a touchdown, this time featuring the running of Lawrence Ricks and Kerry Smith. And Ali Hajashik will try and put the lead back at 17. Rich Hewlett, a former quarterback who's now a defensive back, will hold. And Larry Sweeney is a snapper. A fumble. It is no good. And a bit of a misconnect that time between Larry Sweeney and Rich Hewlett. So with 3.33 to go in the first half of play, Michigan leads by 16 at 23 to 7. That's surprising, Mr. Goodrich. You want to see an offensive line control the line of scrimmage? Watch the Michigan line here fire off, and that's the reason why Smith had no problems getting into the end zone. And the touchdown gives Michigan a 23-7 lead with 3.33 to go. Bo Schembechler talking it over with his bunch. That's not Bo. But he's talking it over, I'm sure. <laughs> Five plays, 47 yards, and just under a couple of minutes. A one-yard touchdown run after the third fumble recovery by the Wolverine defense. That might be the biggest uh, series in the game so far, Byrne, because Purdue was really on their way back into the football game. Uh, Don Anderson came up with a key intercepting interception, and uh, Purdue came up with a big game, and then they fumbled the ball. Michigan recovered, and they go in for another touchdown. They start them out young here at Michigan. <laughs> Lloyd Hawthorne and Steve Griffin are deep. Ali Hashishik will kick it off. It'll be returned at the 10. It's Hawthorne to the 30, 31-yard line. And so Scott Campbell brings the offensive troops back on. Carlton Rose made the tackle, and Ali Hashishik heads for the near side. Got a glimpse of Mike Mallory, whose dad, Bill, was former head coach of Colorado. Now, 
A first down at the 31 yard line. David Rutherford breaks and goes wide to the left side, and Steve Griffin comes wide right. For the day, Campbell is 14 out of 17 for 175. Paul Lawyer, pitch out goes left side to Mel Gray. There's another fumble. And another recovery. Keith Bostick, number 13. That's four. Purdue offense is asking the Purdue defense to do a bit much. Well, you can see the fumble here. Watch it pop up, but watch Bostic, who has an eye for the ball and a feel for it. Uh, he's the All-American, uh, the local kid, and uh, Bostic just does a simple job of jumping on the football. 23 to 7 with 3.20 to go in the first half, and Carter and Bean both come wide to the left side. Lawrence Ricks breaks the tackle. Gets it down to the 28-yard line before Mark Brown makes the tackle. Coming up at halftime, the NCAA today, Brent Musburger, Eric Parsegian, scores and highlights and a feature today in, in their own words. And they will talk with a fascinating gentleman, Dean Nesmith, who has been the trainer at Kansas since 1938. And he's a good one. He's a wonderful, warm human being, and you'll hear Dean talk about his career at Kansas in their own words coming up at halftime. Eddie Gillen's in the backfield now for Michigan on second down and three. It's Ricks again. Close for the first down at the 25. It's a little chilly, as we said. 32 degrees, the expected high today. See Bostic, Rodney Lyles, number 80. Marion Body, number three. They may be cooking hot dogs down there. Third and one. 2.16 to go in the first half. It's 23-7. Michigan jumped out to a 17-7 lead. Purdue fought back with an 82-yard drive to shape it to 17-7. And they've given it up twice since then. Smith, first down. Anthony Carter got in the jumble, and there may have been a fumble. And Purdue says they've got it. That's Don Anderson. No. Michigan keeps it. Bob Lashley, number 39. Saw Anthony come racing in. I couldn't figure out what, what was going on, but he saw the ball pop free. Now Jerry DiOrio and Vince Bean come back in as you look at the scoreboard clock and even two minutes remaining. Total offense now, prior to this drive, had actually been in favor of Purdue. They had 201 yards to 158 for Michigan, but it has been field position and turnovers. Smith looking for Carter, going deep instead for Dunaway. Tip the run, flag. Interference will be called on Bob Lashley, number 39. Look again. You can see one-on-one -on -one coverage down the middle of the field. There's uh, Mark Brown, 59, but the safety man comes over and does a good job of trying to knock the ball away, but uh, he touches the player. It's a questionable call. Go either way. Intended for Dunaway in the end zone, it appeared that Lashley may have had his left hand around the waist of Dunaway. At any rate, it's first and goal, Michigan. Take a look and see. See his left hand? I think it may have been on, my, on Dunaway's waist. Ricks? No. There's a look at Bo. Native of Barberton, Ohio. Graduate of Miami, head coach at Miami. And he's been here since 1969. And has one of the greatest winning percentages in college football history. And a great coach. He's a, he's a well-organized coach. Uh, you know what, what you have to do uh, all the time. And uh, he's a great leader. Rick's the deep man in the eye. Mark Brown has been all over the place today, defensively for Purdue. And that brings on the ire of Mr. Schimbeck. It'll be third and goal from the one. Behind the line, gang. Timeout, Michigan, with 42 seconds to go in the first half. Steve 
Smith comes over to chat with Bo Schembechler. They'll talk it over. The Wolverines have used one of their timeouts. They've got two left. We'll be back in a moment. They've chatted on the sideline, and Michigan has the play call. They've got Eddie Garrett and Lawrence Ricks as the two backs in the I formation. Anthony Carter is in the lineup. Bo Schembechler looks on. 42 seconds to go. Third and inches. And a 23-7 Michigan lead. Ricks. Touchdown. Take another look at that uh, offensive line and the surge that they get. I think Purdue had this plate defense. And uh, Rich breaks a tackle right there. You can see he wasn't in the end zone yet. But uh, yeah, he's a very strong runner and uh, the type of runner that breaks a lot of tackles. He gets in and Michigan scores another one. It comes with 39 seconds to go in the first half. They have converted two of the four fumble recoveries into short touchdown drives. And after Purdue had fought back to make it 17-7, it looked like they might go back and make a game of it when Don Anderson intercepted a pass intended for Anthony Carter. But on the next play, the turnover again, and take a look at the last six possessions. Touchdown, touchdown, field goal interception, touchdown, and touchdown. And the Wolverines will go for two. Carter in motion. He's open. Four-point lead once again, and Anthony will get a rest. He has caught three that will go into the uh, two of which will go into the stats. A touchdown catch of 48 yards. Another catch across the middle, and that one for two points. And Ali Hajashik will kick off once again. 31-7 with 39 seconds to go in the first half. Purdue opened the game by driving to the 31, where they set the tone for the afternoon. They fumbled. Michigan recovered and went the distance. Carter got a 48-yard touchdown pass. Then Lawrence Ricks rumbled 46 yards to set up his own three-yard touchdown. Here's the script kick by Ali Hajashit. And that'll go into the end zone and come back to the 20. That gave Michigan a 14-0 lead. They recovered another fumble in Purdue territory and got a Hajashik field goal to make it 17-0. Purdue then went 82 yards, got a touchdown to shave it to 17-7. Intercepted a pass, Don Anderson did, intended for Anthony Carter. It looked like they might come back and make a game of it, but on the next play, Mel Gray fumbled, Michigan recovered. They got a touchdown from Steve Smith, another fumble recovery, a short drive, and that touchdown run by Lawrence Ricks, the two-point play, and it's 31-7 with 37 seconds to go in the half. Matt Campbell will try it again. Three-man rush. Campbell across the middle. Rodney Carter. And he's got it out to the 31. That may be enough for a first down. Paul Girgash, number 50, made the tackle. Campbell now 15 of 18 for 186 yards. And he's closing in on that record set by Jerry Rome for passes thrown without an interception. He has thrown 185 now. Make it 186. And the hit by Jerry Burgai and Kevin Brooks, number 52. Mel Gray made the catch. 13 seconds to go. Campbell 16 of 19 for 186. This should be the final play of the half. And Campbell will throw it from the shotgun. Incomplete. to seven our score Michigan comfortably on top will be back with halftime activities after this word from our local stations <laughs> 16 the quarterback 
guess who he's throwing to? Anthony Carter again, and he goes in for the first touchdown against Purdue, a long 47-yard work. Now Lawrence Ricks goes in for another touchdown, makes it 17, or 14, they went out to 17, and here is another touchdown again. But Purdue did come back with a score, but this is a powerful offensive team. The one thing about the Schembechler team I think is notable is that they've continued to improve as the season has progressed. They should be tougher in the Rose Bowl. There are more passers in the Big Ten this year, and they'll have some experience back there in the secondary. <laughs> they sure will. <laughs> All right, Missouri and Oklahoma right now, and the Sooners lead. That game has just hit the half. It is 21-14, and again, it's a situation where Missouri won't quit, just like Maryland. That's right. Uh, Oklahoma draws the blood again with Wilson here standing. Wilson just popping right up the middle on a little trap play, and he goes uh, 10 yards for the first touchdown. They go ahead 7 to nothing. Here they come back again. Watch the quarterback, just on a pure sneak, third and short, but there's the missed tackle right there. And Kelly Phelps goes 37 yards for a score. They make it 14. But Missouri comes back with a power off tackle play with Eric Troy carrying it in to make it 14-7. Beautiful reverse play here with uh, the uh, Steve Sewell, or wing back, beautifully blocked. He didn't have to make anybody miss. Great offensive play. Here comes Missouri back again with a long... Well, pass. we talk about uh, field position being so much a part of the game, and it's been demonstrated, uh, obviously, here this afternoon, as Michigan has not had to roll all that far. Well, Rose Bowl. They're uh, 30 minutes away from going back, and that's uh, just a terrific incentive. Absolutely. I mean, uh, what else can a Big Ten team point for? Uh, you know, it's been, you know, Bo was criticized early in the season about not really preparing his team or being that concerned about the Notre Dame, UCLA, Notre Dame and UCLA games. But uh, all he wants to do is get his team out west. And uh, like you said, they're 30 minutes away from doing that. So uh, they're going to achieve their goal, it looks like. If they win today, they go back to Pasadena for the 11th time, Bo Schembechler in Michigan. They're ranked 14th in the country. They're 7-0 in the Big Ten. And they have a lead over Purdue of 31-7 with Ohio State next week. They would like for that game not to meet much. Now let's take a closer look at these schools, Purdue and Michigan. Ann Arbor, 104,000, actually 105,281, the 48th consecutive time they've drawn crowds of 100,000 or plus in this beautiful stadium. And we've had a heat wave, Dennis Franklin. We're all the way up to 35 <laughs> degrees. 51% <laughs> relative humidity. Anthony Carter playing his final game at Michigan Stadium leads his troops back out. Dom Garrity, number 54, Don Urano, Robert Thompson, and the rest of the Michigan Wolverines will go down to Columbus next week to play Ohio State. Vern, you seem to like this weather more than I do. I mean, uh, you haven't had your coat on all day. More years ago than I would like to admit, I was born in Duluth, Minnesota. Okay. I... But I went south shortly thereafter and have lived down there since. I guess it's the Nordic blood that comes back when I get back in this part of the country. Michigan leading by a count of 31 to 7. We're just about set for the second half kickoff. Purdue had won the opening toss and go, uh, had received, so it should be Michigan's ball. They will have the option. It would be nice to go to Columbus, I'm sure, and not have that game mean the spot in the Rose Bowl. I believe that's the first time in 11 years that that game would not have an, a, uh, an effect on the outcome of who goes to the Rose Bowl, and uh, it's got to be a great feeling to be able to do that, and I'm sure... Uh, Bo is thankful. If I, can, I, I don't know what, if Michigan kids would know what it's like to go into Columbus and play loose. It'll still be a big game, though. I'm sure they'll still are going to want to win it. Here come the Boilermakers, this very young team under Leon Burtnett. Three and six for the year. As we uh, told you earlier, they started off with five losses in succession. Came back to defeat Northwestern and Michigan State. Lost to Ohio State, but defeated Iowa last week. And they have 18 freshmen on the travel roster, 21 seniors. 15 juniors, only six sophomores. Leon Burtnett, after 13 seasons as an assistant coach, in his first year as head coach, the 39-year-old out of Meade, Kansas, who played his college football at Tiny Southwestern in Kansas and then became a head coach. Here's the series history. They started back in 1890, and Michigan won that. The last Purdue win was in 79, when, in fact, Michigan was 7-2 and two going into the game, and they lost that game and then got beaten by Ohio State and wound up 8-4 and four for the year. And in 81, Michigan won it 28-10, but they had to score 21 points in the fourth quarter to overcome a 10-7 Purdue lead. 
Burnett has never faced Michigan before, and Bo, of course, has an outstanding record against Purdue. There was an interesting uh, hiatus in the series uh, between about 1911 up until 1960. For some reason, Purdue did not find itself on the Michigan Big Ten schedule, but now they've uh, played more or less regularly. This is Walter Pisa getting ready to kick off for Purdue. And the Michigan troops head deep. Fern Lundquist along with Dennis Franklin, Anthony Carter is back there with Kerry Smith. AC playing his final home game along with 16 fellow seniors. There's David Hall, backup quarterback, playing catch with Steve Smith on the far side. Drapiza, a senior from Goshen, Indiana, will kick it off for Purdue. Nobody's gone home yet. They're waiting to throw the flowers on the field. The Roses. Here's Drapiza, the left-footed kicker. AC will have a chance to run it back. Gets it out as far as the 18-yard line. And from that spot, Michigan will put it in play first down and 10. Anthony Carter with a 48-yard touchdown catch today. He's averaging 17.6 yards per punt return and hasn't had a chance to uh, return one yet today. Purdue hasn't kicked the ball because they've been fumbling. Turned it over four times. Coming up, Ray Boom Boom Mancini and Duck Koo Kim from Las Vegas. The WBA lightweight championship. And I know Sugar Ray Leonard is out there with Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy getting ready for that one. Here's the handoff. Goes up to the 20 yard line. Larry Ricks makes the tackle. Sugar Ray was down at that Arguello prior fight last night and then had to catch an all nighter to go out to Las Vegas. And I imagine he is pooped. But he's probably also relieved that the pressure of the announcement of his decision to retire is behind him now. Second down and eight. Rex has carried it 24 times for 158 yards. Steve Smith, the junior quarterback. Almost picked off. Mark Brown, who has been Mr. Everything, just about got there. I believe it's good anticipation on the part of Brown here. He's got the tight end assignment, Craig Dunaway, 88, one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Now watch him make a lunge for the ball right here. Good anticipation. I'm sure Purdue would like to have a turnover uh, down toward this end of the uh, end zone and uh, get a chance to get back in this football game. Carter and Vince Bean come wide to the left side. Purdue shows a blitz look. Here's Smith rolling out, pops it into the flat, caught by Dan White, short of the first down, and Michigan will have to kick for the first time this afternoon. We'll get a look at Don Bracken out of Thermopolis, Wyoming. Bracken, a junior, is averaging 39.1 yards this year as Smith heads to the sidelines. And this will be his first kick this afternoon. Averaged 43 yards last year, a new record. And as a freshman at Michigan, kicked it for a 42.7 yard average. Steve Griffin, number two, a freshman, is deep to receive the kick. A little bit of a low snap, but no pressure. And a nice high kick. Michigan has averaged only two point yards per return all year. And there's nothing on that return, so the average has helped. Bracken kicks it high. There is no return. 13-36 remaining in the third quarter. A 39-yard kick, but the Boilermakers have the ball. 13-36 remaining third quarter. Boilermakers have the ball first down 10 at their own 36-yard line, facing a 24-point deficit. Three wide receiver offense. Campbell probably will throw on first down. Straight drop back and a three-man rush by Michigan. Across the middle, caught at the 41, had the knee down when Mel Gray made the catch. Mike Boren made the tackle, number 40. Tomorrow, CBS Sports takes you courtside for two great basketball games. First, Bobby Knight's Indiana Hoosiers host the touring Soviet national team. Then the Washington Bullets take on what could be the team to beat this year, the Philadelphia 76ers with Moses Malone and Dr. J. It's all tomorrow, starting at 1 o'clock Eastern on CBS Sports. Philly just lost their first game. Sure did. Last night again. Yeah. Boy, the Indiana. Detroit Pistons are hot, aren't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great basketball team. They look good. Second down and six. They knocked off Milwaukee last night. Draw play. Oh, did this work. Rodney Carter, the freshman, first down at the 50. Paul Geergash, number 50, made the tackle on Carter. 
And Winfred Caraway, number 33, was also close. First time we've seen that particular play today. Vern, I think it's safe to point out here that uh, Michigan seems flat coming out of the locker room at uh, after halftime. They got the ball on offense and didn't do, they did absolutely nothing offensively. And now on defense, they look like they're sitting around uh, waiting for things to happen instead of making them happen. And Purdue want to take advantage or try to take advantage of that and go deep here. Mel Gray gets it again. This time the door is closed for him at left tackle. Robert Thompson, number 99, was a part of the door jam. And it'll be second down about nine. Gray for the day has now carried it 11 times and picked up 36 yards. As you look at Leon Burtnett, 39-year-old, first-year head coach. Eric Jordan makes an appearance now for Purdue, and Gray will get a rest. They wag the plays in. And here come the Boilermakers. No gain on the last play. Officially still second down and 10. Steve Griffin wide to the left side, and Joe Linville is wide right, number 14. Five-man front for Michigan. Boston was up on the line. Here's Campbell into the flat for Benson, and the catch is made at the 45-yard line. Keith Bostic leveled him, number 13, after Benson caught his fifth ball of the day. Okay, you can watch Bostic on the left side of your screen. Now watch the tight end come across. Bostic's got a man-to-man. -man. That's why he's chasing him right now. And he's in good position, and when the receiver goes up to catch it, Bostic just levels him, and uh, he, uh, he had good coverage that time. Bostic came in with 34 catches, and he's caught five for 65 today. And Scott Campbell... He is only 10 away from breaking an 18-year-old NCAA record. Uh, passes thrown without an interception. He's thrown 188 in a row now. Here's the 189th, perhaps. It's caught. Rodney Carter, there's a flag on the far side. If it stands, it's good for a first down, but there's a flag on the far side. That record set in 1964 by Jerry Rome of 198 passes in a row without succession, throwing most of them to Howard Twilley down at Tulsa. Now the option apparently resting with Purdue. Take a look at Campbell, junior out of Hershey, Pennsylvania, where his dad is the athletic director at Hershey High. Defensive holding. I expect they will take the play because it would put them at the 37-yard line. Defensive holding should be just a five-yard penalty. Campbell, 18 of 22 for 201 yards. He's capable of the big day against Ohio State two years ago. He threw for 516 yards, and he's got a year left. Joins that list of Len Dawson, Mike Phipps, Bob Greasy, Mark Herman. There's been some good ones. They really, Dennis, were the first team to have a reputation in the Big Ten as a passing school, weren't they? Absolutely, and uh, you know what changed around was uh, Daryl Rogers, or a lot of people feel that Daryl Rogers changed around when he came up to Michigan State, and they turned into what was a great passing team. Here comes the blitz. Winfred Carraway, number 63. Robert Thompson, number 99. Thompson, the senior pre-med major out of Blue Island, Illinois. You got to be able to feel the pressure in a situation like this. Campbell, a lot of times, will try to stay back there and force it. And uh, Thompson comes in from the backside. He never really saw him. But uh, if, you, if you feel like you're being surrounded, either get rid of it or take off and start to run. That's a loss of nine. It'll be second down at 19 with 10-18 to go in the third quarter. 31-7, Michigan on top. Purdue with the ball for the first time in this half. Campbell will go from the shotgun, and he's looking at a five-man Michigan front. Only four are coming. Draw play, Rodney Carter. Carter gets seven of the nine back. And Winfred Carraway, number 63, the senior out of Detroit, made the tackle. As Carter, the freshman, got the carry for the fourth time today. And he's picked up uh, 20 yards. Look at Jerry Burgai, Marion Body, and there's Carraway. That's a good call, good call by Purdue. Uh, when you feel that much pressure from the offensive line, you got to do things like run draws. And the other thing that they can do now in this situation is run a screen. You let that offense, the defensive line come in, throw the ball over them, and pick up good yardage. Campbell will go from a regular set with his back split and two wide receivers. He'll roll out, looks back to his left, pumps once, drills it. It's caught. Eric Jordan will be a yard short of the first down, and it'll be fourth down at the 26. Jordan, the senior from Las Vegas, runs into Mike Boren, but Campbell has completed 19 of 23, and he's nine away from that 18-year-old record. He's having an outstanding afternoon. Got a great touch, doesn't he? 
Of course, I know you threw the ball that much in Michigan, <laughs> so you can really appreciate a throwing quarterback. Here it comes, here it comes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Pitch the ball, Dennis. Pitch the ball. Anyway, Campbell is really effective, and I think what makes him as good as he is is he sits back there and he reads the defense. He throws to the right guy on a given situation. Fourth and two. Has it. That's going to be close. I don't know if they got enough. It's Mel Gray at the 25. I think he's going to be short. Paul Gergash knocked him down. Starting his 34th consecutive game. So the fourth down play is complete, but it's not enough for the first down. Michigan has the ball back, and they still have a 24-point lead. It's a great day. Bert Lundquist, Dennis Franklin, back at Michigan Stadium, Ann Arbor, 31 to 7. Wolverines have the lead of the ball at their own 25 and a half yard line. Steve Smith, the junior quarterback, still in there. Hands it off to Lawrence Ricks. He is nailed behind the line by Mark Brown. Coming up at the conclusion of the game, Dennis and I will be picking the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player, and we'll be giving a $1,000 scholarship to each school, one uh, for each school. Mark Brown or Scott Campbell currently uh, our leading candidate, certainly, Dennis, for Purdue. I'd agree with that. Michigan really looks flat on offense. Uh, that's their fourth offensive play in the second half, and uh, they've picked up no yardage whatsoever so far. Second down and 12. Ricks lost two on the last play. Both wide receivers wide right. Caught on the outside, man. Here's the option play, and Smith will keep it. And he is belted backwards at the 25-yard line. Mark Brown again, along with Chris Scott. Brown was named the UPI Midwestern Defensive Player of the Week last week for his play against Iowa when he had something like 12 tackles. And he has just been brilliant this afternoon. He was a starter a year ago and transferred two years back as you look at Brock Spack from Los Angeles' Southwest Junior College. Third down, 11. Carter wide to the right side. Steve Smith drops back and looks. Fires it out short of Anthony, but it'll not be enough for a first down. Bob Lashley makes sure of that, number 39, as the catch is made by number 36, Dan Rice. And so again, Doc Brackett will come home to uh, the punt. They really are flat right now. Yeah, they're not executing. Uh, they're not making things happen. Uh, offensively, they look like they're sitting around and just, uh, you know, they feel like they, they got the game won, or that's the way it appears to me. And uh, they've got to go out and execute again if they want to continue to put pressure on the uh, Purdue's defense. Don Bracken's second punt. Again, Michigan has given up only 2.3 yards per carry, or per return. And this one will not be returned as it takes a Michigan roll of sorts and goes out of bounds at the 32-yard line. That's a 37-yard punt for Don Bracken, his second punt of the day. 6.35 remaining in the third quarter. Purdue has the ball back, but they have a 24-point lead to overcome. 6.35 to go third quarter. We're back at Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, and the celebration continues in the stands. Many of these folks will be in the Rose Bowl, perhaps, on New Year's Day. Purdue has the ball. First down, 10 to the 33. Five-hand front, blitz threaten, handoff, Mel Gray, squirts through for about three. The junior tailback, only 5'9", 173 pounds, and had 782 yards coming in. Paul Giergash and Robert Thompson make the tackle on Mel Gray, who has now carried it 12 times for 38 yards today. Second down, eight. Scott Campbell, 20 of 24 for 212. Tony Gant, a late addition now. There's a look at Campbell. Seven away from tying the NCAA record set by Jerry Rome. And he'll throw on second down. Nope. Now, freelances, finds a man. Benson can't hang on. Bostic was in front, number 13, and Tony Gant just behind. He had to pinpoint that pass and make it almost perfect. Good touch. Campbell's got good touch. Look uh, at this. He improvised. Look at this. <laughs> it's early. Illinois, Mike White, Tony Eason, 21 nothing lead over Indiana in the first quarter. Eastern Michigan and Bowling Green tied. Eastern Michigan joyous after breaking the losing streak last night, or last week. Central Michigan leading Ball State by three TDs. And Duke and North Carolina State. I think there's a North on the front of that. <laughs> and North Carolina leading Virginia 10-7 in the first quarter of play. Georgia Tech well out in front of Wake Forest. Our score is 31-7, 5.54 to go third quarter. 
Campbell now seven, seven away from breaking the record, and it's third down and eight. Motion from Benson. He's got Benson across the middle, but he can't get there, and Purdue will have to eat it. Dave Meredith, a junior out of Sterling Heights, Michigan, number 96. Got his first start ever earlier this season against Michigan State. He's a big hunk at 6'4", 247, a junior. And Matt Kinzer comes on to punt, and you'll get a chance to see Anthony Carter return kicks. Anthony, as you look at Matt Kinzer, Anthony Carter with a 17.6 yards per return average. That is obviously leading NCAA football. Flag is down. Here's the kick by Kinzer. It's a good one. And AC grabs it at the 23. Run out of words for Anthony Carter. Look at this. Here's Dan Decker, a freshman quarterback, and underneath that, he's wearing number nine. <laughs> now, back in 72, 3, and 4, Dennis Franklin wore number nine. I'm a little shocked that thing's not hanging in the Hall of Fame. How come they didn't retire it? Huh? <laughs> what is this? Am I being set up here? <laughs> well, you 30 wins, two, two defeats, and a tie. They should have retired the jersey. Well, I agree with you, Ryan, but uh, what am I supposed to How can they give it to Dan Decker? I don't understand this. I can understand how they might retire number one, though, huh? Anthony Carter, that was a 29-yard return for AC. The penalty, however, may wipe it out. Here's the call from Joe, John Nealon. Offside, Michigan, and they will punt again. So wipe out the 29-yarder and give winded Anthony Carter a chance to run it back again. The offside call was not enough for the first down for Purdue. But it does indeed wipe out the 29-yard punt return for Anthony Carter. Pat Snyder snaps it back. It's a good one. And this is a terrific kick. Carter at the 10. Despite having just run it back 29 yards, he still gets it back about 11. A 50-yard kick, and for Carter, 11 on the return. 441 remaining in the third quarter. We'll be right back. CAA football live on CBS. Purdue and Michigan, 105,281 gathered here in Michigan Stadium. Uh, Michigan victory will send them to Pasadena for the 11th time, where they first played back in 1902. First down, 10, Wolverine, Smith, handoff, Lawrence Ricks. Jammed up by Matt Hernandez, number 71, a senior from Detroit. An interesting development down in the south. Let's go to Brent Musburger in New York for this NCAA update. Try and get back to Brent at the moment. Here's Steve Smith taking the draw play. Looking deep. Pops it out. Almost intercepted. Almost picked off by David Fry, the senior out of Cincinnati, Ohio. And it'll be third and eight for a suddenly rather uninspired Michigan team, Dennis Franklin. They're uh, not executing. Uh, that time, Smith tried to force the ball in the, in the Carter, and we made, made mention of the fact that the difference in uh, the last five or six games and Michigan having uh, great offensive performances was the fact that Smith didn't do that anymore. And uh, for whatever reason, he should not have thrown that football. Third down, eight, four, six to go, third quarter. Fake the draw again. Standing strong, puts it out, caught by the tight end. That will be close for the first down at the 32-yard line. Mark Brown again with the tackle. And Dunaway, the tight end, might have picked up enough to sustain the drive. And if he did, it would be the first first down for the Wolverines in this uh, quarter. We're going to try and get that update from Brent Musburger. But let me tell you that the score is Auburn 7, Georgia 3 down at Auburn. And we'll try and get the highlight for you in just a few moments. 7-3, to three, Auburn leading top-ranked and undefeated Georgia. I know a few folks who were out in Lubbock, Texas today where SMU is playing Texas Tech. 
We'll be watching Georgia that one a little closer. Down Bit of a letdown by Georgia. They won last week, I believe, 44 nothing, and uh, things aren't working. That game was brought to you by uh, CBS. You saw that uh, Michigan was about uh, six inches short. And so Don Blacken is on to kick it for the third time. And Steve Griffin, who had a 71-yard return last week in the win over Iowa, is back at the 20-yard line. 3.49 to go, 31-7. to seven, And that was the score at halftime. A super kick. But Griffin will have a chance to run it back. Looks for some help. Terrific downfield coverage by Michigan. A 49-yard kick and minus one on the return. The tackle made by Kerry Smith, number 23. Still to come this afternoon on CBS Sports Saturday, the WBA Lightweight Championship. Ray Boom Boom Mancini from Youngstown, Ohio, taking on Duck Koo Kim out of Korea. And that will be coming to you live from Las Vegas. Tim Ryan, Gil Clancy, and a rather tired Sugar Ray Leonard. We'll be out there for that one. Coming up on CBS Sports Saturday at the conclusion of our college football scoreboard. First down, 10. Purdue, 31-7 with 3.38 to go. Here's Campbell to throw on first down. Fires it out for his tight end. And Cliff Beaton has his sixth catch of the day. Gets it out to the 27-yard line. Junior out of Robbins, Illinois, he is tackled by Marion Body and Mike Bora. Herschel has just scored on a 47-yard run, and Georgia has regained the lead over Auburn, 10-7. Scott Campbell now six away from setting an NCAA record for passes without an interception. The record is 198. He's thrown 192. Second down. Blitz coming. Hand off. Whoa, my goodness. Robert Thompson, number 99, jammed up Eric Jordan, number 20. Don't know if he got enough for the first down. The record is for passes attempted without an interception, not passes completed. And it was set, as we said, by Jerry Rome back in 1964. When he and Howard Twilley were setting all kinds of NCAA records. They'll bring the chain out. Campbell, good-looking young kid out of Hershey, Pennsylvania. Six foot, 205 pounder. With a year to go. First down, 10, First down, Purdue. Purdue. 21 of 26 for 220 yards today. And it's a first down, 10, a fresh series for Purdue. Substitution in the offensive backfield now. Lloyd Hawthorne, a freshman out of Los Angeles, number 34, comes in. Clemson on top of Maryland by 14 in the bid for the ACC Championship, another of our regional telecast on CBS. Campbell under some pressure. Being chased, fires it out. Incomplete. He was chased by Al Sinsich, the nose guard, who got away from the block of Paul Royer in the center. And Tom Hassel was also putting some pressure on him. You can see Sinchich, watch him, number 53. He comes in right away as soon as Campbell gets the ball. But uh, Campbell did have the presence of mind to uh, scramble around back there, make himself a, or give himself enough time to at least release the ball and uh, try to come up with a completion. He threw it in the, uh, in the area of, of uh, Cliff Benson, his tight end. But uh, it was kind of a dangerous pass. I probably would have elected to just throw it out, <laughs> throw it out of bounds. Second down and 10. Fires it out, caught. This is Mel Graham, first down at the 42-yard line. Tackle made by John Lott, number 44. And Campbell is now four passes away from the record. It is passes attempted without an interception. That is the NCAA record held by Jerry Rohn. The record is 198 passes attempted without having a pass intercepted. And Scott Campbell, whose last pass was intercepted in the first quarter by Illinois, he is now four away from setting the record. He needs three to tie. Total offense, passing 214 yards for Purdue today. They fake the handoff. Fires it out, incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. Robert Thompson, number 99, had put some pressure on Scott Campbell, and John Lott was defending as the pass was intended for Dave Rutherford, number 48. Here's a look at Robert Thompson. 
One of 17 seniors playing before 105,000 in their final home appearance at Michigan Stadium. And you know, talking to Bo uh, Schembechler uh, yesterday, he wasn't really that concerned about a letdown by his Michigan team because of the great senior leadership and for the seniors to know that today was going to be their last game here. And he felt like that was enough reason to get him up along with the road goal. Draw play, Bell Gray breaks a tackle. May have enough for another Purdue first down. He's out of bounds right at the 50. Keith Bostic, number 13, made the stop. For Gray, that's 13 carries for 47 yards. Southern Mississippi leading Alabama. 7-0, first quarter score. <laughs> 2 25 to go third quarter. Just by way of information, Scott Campbell has not been told how close he is to the NCAA record. And they've not been keeping him abreast of it. So when it happens, if it does, don't express it any kind of a celebration. Here's third down. And the gift goes to the big freshman fullback, Rodney Carter. Tackle is made by Tom Hassel. We were talking with uh, Jim Brugink, the uh, public relations director, the sports information director of Purdue yesterday. And he said, no, Scott doesn't know. He has no clue. Well, they don't want him to start thinking about records. Uh, that's a bad thing to, to be out there as a player and uh, be aware of a record just because uh, you're playing and trying to achieve a record. That's not really what football is all about. So. First and 10, Purdue, 31 to 7, Michigan leads it. Gamble under Paul Roy. He'll throw it again. Fires it deep in the single coverage. Tip incomplete. Marion Body, number three, with excellent position. Excellent position as the pass was intended for Steve Griffin, number two. It is nonetheless not intercepted, so Mr. Campbell is now two away from the record. He's thrown it 32 times today. He has thrown 100. Look at this. Southern Mississippi leading Alabama 14 0 in the first quarter. Marion Body, the senior, out of Detroit. Second down 10, 31 to 7 with 159 to go third quarter. Griffin comes wide to the right side. Dave Rutherford is wide left. Hand off to Mel Gray. They try the draw, this time gain just two as Tom Hassel, number 48, makes the stop. And for Gray, 14 carries for 48 yards. Purdue has had the ball for most of the third quarter, but they haven't gotten close to the goal line, Dennis. It's true. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> what? <laughs> How do you like the trap I lead you in? Uh, yes. <laughs> Not much you can say. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Third down. And eight. Flag is down. Campbell. Dead. Intercepted. Intercepted. Now there is a flag. Marion Body got the interception. And if the play stands, Scott Campbell will have come within one of tying the record. Watch here. You can see Campbell. Now watch the defensive uh, uh, lineup of Michigan. You see, the, there's too many Michigan players. He tried to throw the ball through a Michigan player, which is what you don't want to do. Now, if you're a record freak, here's the call, and the interception will be wiped out. I think Michigan did have too many Michigan players. I think they had 12 men on the field. See if the mic is working. That's the call. 12 men on the field for the Michigan defense. So wipe out the pass, wipe out the interception. Campbell still has a chance at the record. He was within one of tying it. So he is still two away from breaking it. Marion Body's interception is wiped out. It'll be third and four. Three wide receivers in for Purdue. A four-man Michigan front. No blitz. Gamble. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down. One, two. But with that pass, Scott Campbell has now tied an 18-year-old record set by Jerry Rome for Tulsa. He has thrown 198 consecutive passes without having one intercepted, but got there only by virtue of 12 men on the field for Michigan that wiped out Marion Body's interception. It'll be fourth down, and Purdue will go for it. 
Well, 31 to 7. You're three and six for the year. Yeah, Purdue's had a lot of success with throwing the ball to their backs. I mean, they've been open. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see them come back here and try to get it to one of their running backs. Across the middle. It's not only a first down, but there is also a flag down. So let's check it. Rodney Carter made the tackle. There's no flag. And Scott Campbell has just gone into the NCAA record book. A timeout for an injured player. I'm not sure who it is, but Scott Campbell for the day. Now 22 of 31 for 214 yards. And he has thrown 199 passes without having one intercepted. Rodney Carter, their injured player. Campbell has a piece of an NCAA record. Did you throw 199 passes at uh, Michigan, Dennis? You mean in my entire career? In your career? career? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> 199, and the string continues. First down. Going deep across the middle. To the six-yard line. And even 200 for Scott Campbell. Here's that uh, open, that uh, middle zone that we talked about at the beginning of uh, our telecast. Down the middle, you'll see Benson go in the zone behind the linebackers in front of the secondary people. He gets a good toss from Campbell and a big pickup by the Purdue offense. Benson has caught seven for 98 yards now. It's first and goal, Purdue, at the Michigan six-yard line. Final half minute, third quarter. Mel Gray. To the four. Mike Boren with the tackle, number 40. If you're just joining us, it was uh, 31 to 7 at the half. Michigan got big scores in the first quarter and jumped out to a 17 0 lead. Anthony Carter, look at the uh, playlist on the Michigan bench. Anthony Carter with a 48 yard touchdown pass. Larry Ricks with a couple. Ali Hajashik with a field goal. They jumped out to a 17-0 lead. Purdue shaped it to 17-7, then started uh, giving the ball up. And two fumbles led to two Michigan touchdowns to make it 31-7 at the half. We have had no scoring in the third quarter, which has now expired. So we've got 15 left. That's the end of the third quarter with the score, 31-7. We'll be back with fourth quarter action after this message and a word from your local station. We're back for the final 15 here at Michigan Stadium. Vern Lundquist along with Dennis Franklin. Michigan on top, 31-7. to And take a look at the third quarter stats, Dennis. Well, you can see uh, Purdue has really held on to the football in the third quarter. They haven't uh, had a turnover. Those four turnovers were in the first half. And uh, they play good. All they need to do now is get in the end zone. Campbell. Incomplete. Keith Bostic almost picked it off. Intended for Cliff Benson, the tight end. Well, the time of possession, six minutes now in favor of Purdue, which reiterates, of course, what happened in that first period when they coughed the football up twice and then in the second quarter when they coughed it up twice more. Turnovers in field position, and that's why they're down 31-7. to Rodney Carter comes back in the game, so he obviously wasn't injured that much. It'll be second or third and goal from the four. Purdue should roll out here. Campbell is a very capable runner. And uh, they'll just put a lot more pressure on, on the Michigan defense if they do some sort of rollout pattern. That's exactly what they did. He's got a man open. Touchdown. Cliff Benson, his eighth catch of the day. I think my buddy knows a little bit about quarterback. You call that one like you've been on the sideline. So the Boilermakers shave the lead. It's 31 to 13 on the second play of the fourth quarter. Take a look again. Here's the bootleg. Watch the Michigan defenders go after the run. They think it's a run. Now he could have done one of two things here. It looked like he had the advantage to beat the uh, gear gash uh, 50 uh, to the end zone if Campbell wanted to run, but his receiver was wide open. So uh, why not throw it in there for the six points? 31-13, the Purdue band up from West Lafayette is celebrating. They'll be busing back after the game. Team will fly back from the charter. And let's see if they decide to go for one or two. Place kicker is coming out. Tim Clark. And they will go for one. Tim 
Clark, who has missed only one all year. Junior out of Lincoln, Pennsylvania. He's got this one. 14 minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the football game. Purdue is on the boards again. It's 31 to 14 with Purdue about to kick off. Fifteen fifty to go, fourth quarter. Walter Pisa getting set to kick off for the Boilermakers of Purdue. They drove in 81 yards in 15 plays and got the touchdown pass to Cliff Benson, the tight end. That is his eighth catch of the day for 102 yards. Trapeza will kick it off, 31-14, and All-American Anthony Carter goes back to the tournament. Carter, the senior out of Riviera Beach, Florida. Well, he's a three-time All-American. There's another kid down in Georgia who's going to be a three-time All-American like Anthony Herschel Walker. And we're going to show you that Herschel Walker run in a moment. Here's the kickoff. And this will be taken by Carter. And he's out of bounds at the 25-yard line with about a 23-yard return. Herschel Walker with a 47-yard touchdown. Let's go to New York with Brent Musburger for an NCAA update. Brent? And Vern, here is that touchdown we tried to show you earlier. Herschel gets outside on Auburn, goes the distance. He now is the first junior to rush more than 5,000 yards in his career. Georgia leads Auburn by three. Let's go back to Vern. All right, Brent. Of course, Herschel is closing in on the NCAA rushing career record. Uh, a buddy of mine named Dorsett holds that. I've heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> and Herschel with... Uh, a game left this year, and of course another season. There was a penalty, by the way, when he went away to Brent, and here's the call. Personal foul against Purdue. And so a 15-yard penalty marked off, and Michigan will start from their own 40-yard line. They've still got the front-line troops in there. Paul Dixon leading him up, or Tom Dixon, rather. And Anthony Carter headed wide to the left side. This is the first first down. Well, they, didn't, they do get a first down on the penalty. That's exactly right. And it goes in the record book as a first down. Lawrence Rex had 150-some at halftime and has been uh, not used that much here in the third quarter. Matt Hernandez made the tackle, and uh, so did Mark Brown. You can see Mark Brown here, and it's Brown against Ricks. And uh, there's no uh, interference, and he just gets himself set, comes up and makes the tackle. The fact that there was no offensive lineman on Brown would tell you that the line from Michigan is not firing out on that particular shoot. Second down and seven. Smith, play fake. Looks for Anthony, then throws away from him, and it's caught by Vincent Bean for a first down at the 42-yard line, a gain of 15. Derek Taylor made the tackle. Vincent Bean with his first catch of the day. Bean is a junior. He's got a year left. Clemson leading Maryland, 24 to 15 in the fourth quarter. And Alabama has shaved Southern Mississippi's lead to seven. Still in the first quarter to play. Anthony Carter for the day has caught just two, one for a touchdown. Had a 29-yard punt return wiped out. Carter and Bean both go wide to the left. And Eddie Garrett is in the backfield in the fullback spot now. Blitz is coming from Purdue. And off goes to Lawrence Ricks. First down at the 28. Well, what happens here once again is the linebackers from Purdue, they happen to be blitzing on this play. You might be able to pick them up here. But once he breaks the line of scrimmage here, Ricks is into the secondary. He got good blocking from his offensive line, and it was just a matter of him running. 13.50 to go in the ball game, and Michigan showing some life. They were almost uh, still in the third quarter offensively. Smith with a handoff to Lawrence Ricks again. A little burst of speed at the line of scrimmage, another first down. And Lawrence Ricks is closing in on a personal best now. He has now tied his personal best of 184 yards. Same play, deep handoff, let the tailback run where the daylight is. This time he cuts outside, and uh, you can see he wasn't touched until the safety man came up and made the tackle. Uh, Ray Wallace, number 43 for Purdue. The crowd responding to the effort of senior Lawrence Ricks. Maybe our Chevrolet most valuable player. Ricks to the 
yard line. Bo Schembechler, appreciative of that effort. In 1980, as a sophomore, Ricks rushed for 184 yards. That was his best until this one. Same play. Cuts outside. Watch him just cut outside. Nobody touches him until he's in the secondary once again. And you're not getting any penetration from the defensive line if, uh, or you're getting great uh, blocking up front by Michigan. If your tailback runs the football and he's not touched until he gets into the secondary. 193 yards this afternoon. They'll do it again. Fumble. Scramble. Who got it? Purdue has the ball. Ray Wallace, one of four freshman starters. Number 43. Out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Well, it was bound to happen at some point because he's been carrying the football quite a bit this afternoon. Here, there's a tackle. I believe it was Mark Brown who caused the fumble on uh, number 59. And Lawrence Ricks was shaken up. Ricks hurt on the play. And the Michigan trainers are out on the field. That is the first turnover of the third, uh, the second half. 31 to 14. Timeout has been called. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> was able to get up and walk off by himself. No problem, apparently. But nonetheless, there's Larry Rex. Just a moment ago, he got up and walked off without assistance. He's got 197 yards for the day. That appears to be just fine. Campbell will throw from the end zone. Pops it out. Incomplete. Almost picked off. 31 for 197, a personal best by 13 yards. He's well over 1,000 for the year. Joins that list of Rob Lytle, Butch Wolfolk, Gordon Bell, Ron Johnson. Remember back in 1968 on this field, the last game played on natural grass here? Ronnie Johnson ran for 347 yards, five touchdowns. There was a guy down at Purdue named Leroy Keyes that year who also made All-American. That was 14 years ago. Ohio State still leading Northwestern. Here's the pass incomplete behind Marty Scott, number 84. And it'll be third down and 10 with 12.15 to go. Campbell's mad at himself because uh, he had his man open and he just threw a bad pass. When you're this clo close to your own end zone, you don't want to make any mistakes like that. You want to kind of move that football out and give yourself a little better uh, operating room. Scott Campbell facing third and 10 is now 25 of 37 today. And he has thrown 203 times without having a pass intercepted. That is a new NCAA record. The old mark of 198 set by Jerry Rowan back in 1964. Third and 10. Half roll. Marion Body. Sooner or later, we're going to get you. And Marion Body, the senior quarterback, number three, made the interception. Well, you can see Campbell here. He gives up on the uh, on the pass. He, I thought he should have run the football, but he, had, he was trying to lead his tight end back across the middle, or he was trying to lead number two, Steve Griffin, back across the middle, and uh, he led him too far. Marion Body was in good position, number three. Intercepted the ball. Now he gives Michigan excellent field position. So the streak for Scott Campbell ends at 203. And Bo Schembechler likes what he saw. Our report from the bench is that Lawrence Ricks just had the wind knocked out of him, and he will be back in the game. In the meantime, Purdue has just called timeout to try and quiet things down. That'll give Steve Smith and Bo Schembechler a chance to chat things over. We've got 12 minutes and two seconds remaining in the football game. Michigan just might be Rose Bowl bound. First down and goal at the five-yard line. Carter wide to the left side. Eddie Garrett and Kerry Smith with the running backs. Sim Nelson in motion. The handoff, Kerry Smith to the one. In our attention to Scott Campbell's pursuit of the NCAA record, we almost overlooked something with Anthony Carter. He's got a touchdown catch today for six points, and he caught a two-point pass. That gives him eight for the day. It gives him 238 career points, and guess who that passes? 
perhaps the greatest name in Michigan football history, Tom Harmon, for the school record for career points. That's just another, that's the 10th school record for Anthony Carter. It's second down and goal. Touchdown. remaining in the football game. Five-yard drive in two plays. Took only 42 seconds. Kerry Smith scoring after Marion Body intercepted Scott Campbell's pass. There's a look at Lloyd Hawthorne, a freshman out of Los Angeles, number 34. And he is joined deep by Steve Griffin, a fellow freshman, two of the 18 who made the trip up here. Ali Hajashik will kick off. Ali with four for four in extra points today. And he has now kicked 71 in succession without missing. Also has 31 field goals for a career. He's chasing the mark of 108 extra points, or 113, by Mike Langtree. He's got 112 now for his career. So a lot of records being broken or equal today. Here's Hawthorne running it back to the 23-yard line. Haja Sheik needs one more to tie the mark of Mike Langtree for career extra points. Mike Mallory, number 42, with the tackle. And the Boilermakers back on the field. Going to Pasadena? I can't tell you for sure. I'd like to go out there and warm up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> First down and 10. 11.15 to go in the game. Looks like it'll be Michigan in the Rose Bowl for the 11th time. Going deep. Campbell, Rutherford, double coverage, intercepted. John Lott, number 44, senior out of Nazareth, Ohio. And the Roses are in blue in Ann Arbor, Michigan in mid-November. Go blue! One of the 17 seniors on the Michigan squad. Michigan had a chance to go out last year. Played Ohio State here in the final regular season game. Needed a win. Didn't get it. Wound up playing in the Blue Bonnet Bowl against UCLA. John Lott, the senior. Second pass interception this year. Smith is still in there. Motion from Anthony Carter. The flags are down. It's 35 degrees and cloudy here in Ann Arbor. On New Year's Day, it'll be about 75 degrees and clear in Pasadena. One thing I don't quite understand, how can they bring an announcer up here from Dallas and keep him warm and the quarterback from Michigan is freezing? <laughs> You're shivering. I am. <laughs> I guess my blood's uh, thinned out over the years in this cold weather. Six turnovers for Purdue, four in the first half, all fumbles, two pass interceptions here in the fourth quarter. It's 38-14, 11 minutes to go in the game. Smith will throw. Looks deep for Anthony Carter. Waits for it, tip, caught! Concentration of Anthony Carter. He's going to beat his man deep. 
He gets a good throw from Smith. It's going to be tipped by 15, Donnie Anderson. Watch him tip it. But watch the concentration afterwards. Here's the tip right there. Now look at him. He never takes his eye off the ball. He brings it in. It's almost like he knew he could catch it anyway. And uh, that's how confident and what a spectacular career that's about to end here at uh, Michigan for Anthony Carr. Just a, I don't, you know, I can't I can run out of that to Ali Hajashik tags on the extra point. In his career, Anthony Carter has 33 touchdown catches now. He's one away from the NCAA record. Another now. Gotcha. 10-54 remaining in the ball game. Michigan on top, 45-14. to Anthony Carter, 62-yard touchdown run. It's 45-14, to and let's look at Anthony Carter's 33rd career catch. Once again, the, the key point here is the concentration. Once the ball is tipped, he never takes his head off of it, and uh, they teach that in drills to wide receivers to concentrate on the tip ball as well as the ones that drop, drop in your hands. And uh, Carter never gave up on it, and he comes up with another big play. He's got one more game and one more quarter in which to tie Elmo Wright's career record of 34 catches. 57 yards in one play. Well, we've got uh, a big lead for Michigan here. And those of you in Michigan and Indiana will continue to stay with us in this game. But we've got a great game going on between Maryland and Clemson. And in just a few seconds, we're going to send you, most of you, to that Maryland-Clemson game that is going to decide the ACC championship. Now, those of you in the Michigan and Indiana areas will continue to watch this game to its conclusion. But that Maryland-Clemson battle is going on fiercely in College Park. And so we're going to send the vast majority of you to that game. Now let's go to New York and Brent Musburger. Vern, Clemson's lead now over Maryland is down to two points. Clemson shanked a punt. Nero, what happened to the 20-yard line first down for Maryland? Maryland had the ball first down and 20 or 10 yards to go, and there was a holding penalty. They're back to the 30 now. All right, we're going to pick it up now. Second down. Remember, they're only behind by two. Here's Lindsey Nelson. It's suddenly gone awry for Scott Campbell. 45-14, second down and 10. And we've got 10-48 remaining. And they're smelling the roses in Ann Arbor. Campbell has thrown it 40 times today, completed 25 for 252. Back to play, this one incomplete. Mel Gray added in his fingertips and couldn't hang on. Vern, you know, as a player, it's really difficult when you get into a situation like this. You're behind late in the football game. You still got, you know, better than 10 minutes to play. But the hardest thing as a, as a player is to continue that concentration. Uh, it's very easy to give up, and uh, Purdue, uh, in a situation like this, is, is really not concentrating. They, they've got to continue to do the little things, and they're just not doing it. Third down and 10, Purdue. Campbell under his center, Paul Roy. Four-man rush, not much of one. And Campbell, it's caught by Griffin with the 35, that'll be a first down. Freshman out of Miami makes the grab. And so a fresh set of downs now for Purdue. It's a very young team, and they've got a bunch of guys coming back. They do have 21 seniors on the travel squad, but as many as eight freshmen have started for them this year. And they've got four starting this afternoon. And this is a terrific Michigan football team that has shown us why they're going to win the Big Ten Championship. Had a sputtering start when they lost two of their first three. Campbell back to throw again. Incomplete, almost picked off. It'll be second and ten. Intended for Mel Gray. Campbell now 43 attempts today and 26 completions. And it'll be second down and 10. Bo Schembechler is not, Dennis, a, a statistic or, or career goal-oriented man, is he? It, it's, he doesn't pay that much attention to records. No, he doesn't. Uh, he's a team-oriented uh, type of coach. He uh, emphasizes team leadership from his seniors and uh, team victories and individual statistics he doesn't care for. This one is caught. It's good for a first down. All the way down to the 38-yard line. Catch made by Joe Linville, number 14, 
A senior from Carmel, Indiana, John Lott made the tackle. That's Linville's first catch today. He had 13 coming in. Ohio State leading Northwestern by seven in the second quarter. Iowa over Wisconsin, 14 to seven. Hayden Fry's team leading Dave McLean's team by a touchdown, and Clemson leading Maryland, 24-22 in the fourth quarter. First and ten. Draw play. Mel Dre. Breaks one tackle to the 30. It's Tim Richardson, number 31, instead of Gray. 31 had come in. A freshman out of Springfield, Illinois. Steve Smith still playing catch. We might get a chance to see David Hall here shortly. Yeah, I would believe that, uh, I gotta believe that uh, David Hall is the one warming up, not Steve Smith. Steve Smith is nine out of 13 and has thrown two touchdowns today. Georgia Tech leading Wake Forest and Illinois rolling over Indiana. First and 10, Purdue. 23 yard line. Blitz coming. Campbell pops it across the middle. Caught by Jeff Fulmer, number 41. A junior out of Berwick, Pennsylvania. Carl Rose made the tackle. Fulmer started in this game last year for Purdue and picked up 106 yards. But he has not seen action until that play today. 9 10 remaining in the game. And it's 45 to 14, Michigan. Not a soul has gone home. They're enjoying it. They're having a good time. Second down and three at the 15 yard line. Here comes the blitz again. The handoff to Mel Gray tries to weave over right tackle. Gets one. Nate Rogers, number 61, and Mike Hammerstein, number 66, make the tackle. We've got a few substitutions now for that Michigan defense. Carlton Rose is still in there. Kevin Brooks is in, number 52. You look at Marion Body, who has a pass interception today. Rich Hewlett, number two, is a former quarterback who actually started a couple of games at quarterback in his freshman year. Number 40, Mike Bourne, a senior linebacker. Number 10, Jeff Cohen. So they have made substitutions defensively. It'll be third down at about two. Gray gets it. Close to the first down. Bruce King, number 37, was not great. And the clock continues to roll with 8.11 to go, and they've called time now to see if they need a measurement. Mike Limeran, number 93, another of the 17 seniors. That was a bit of a surprise by Purdue, the quick hitter up the middle. Uh, I'm sure they thought perhaps they might catch the Michigan defense uh, sleeping and they get the quick hitter in there and uh, possibly <laughs> pop it for uh, six points. 8.05 remaining. First and, goal, first and 10 at the 12-yard line. Campbell with 45 attempts, 28 completions for 300 yards. Being chased. Into the end zone, incomplete. The intended receiver was Marty Scott, the tight end, number 84. Campbell was being chased by number 61, sophomore Nate Rogers. And the clock stopped with 7.49 to go. <laughs> Beach ball, I getting ready for the Pacific Ocean. It'll be Michigan against either, I can't even say it. Michigan against either Arizona State or Washington in the Rose Bowl on January 1st. Campbell fakes the draw, goes out. Oh, what a hit at the line of scrimmage. And the timing was perfect. Tony Gant, number 14. Pop Marty Scott, number 84. Tony Gant brought it up. <laughs> It'll be third down and 10 with 7.44 to go. Vern, uh, Campbell's such a great uh, thrower, and uh, he thinks pass before he thinks run. On that particular play, he had broken containment, and uh, rather than risk the throw downfield, he could have you know, picked up the first down, possibly even a touchdown, had he continued to run with the football instead of throw. Third and 10, no shotgun. It'll be fourth down. David Rutherford, the intended receiver, number 48. I'll tell you, Scott Campbell may be arm weary. He's thrown it 48 times now and completed 48. But it has not gone well for him here in the second half, particularly the fourth quarter. And that'll bring up a fourth down and 10 from the 12. 7.39 remaining in the game. And again, 
no shotgun formation. Four-man front for Michigan. They are not blitzing. Campbell rolls right into the end zone. Man open, caught, touchdown. Rick Bruner, a freshman from Boca Raton, hey! Florida. That's his first catch for Purdue, and his first touchdown, obviously, for Purdue. He doesn't know the score is 45 to 20. He's happy. <laughs> this play is set up by Campbell. What he does here is give himself some more room, watch him scramble around, and you can see in the back of the end zone, watch the Michigan players overrun the play. Campbell now throws back against the grain, finds his receiver open in the back of the end zone, big play, and it was all set up by Campbell running around in the pocket. Ken Clark is on to try and tack on the extra point. Flags down, there was motion, they'll go for two. And the holder brings it out to the left side. There was Clark. Clark running. There were uh, flags at the line of scrimmage. I'm amazed. Here's a kid, Tim Clark, who has only half of his right foot. And that was a design play. They snapped it back directly to him. No, I, I no? don't think you missed it. Just the, the, a, okay. the holder dropped the ball on the Pitched snap. It back. And then, then Clark picked it up. There's a look at Tim Clark. Lost half of his foot. I couldn't believe it was a design play. No, I just missed it. That's right. So they'll try it again. 45 to 20 with 7.32 to go in the game. It's good. 7.32 remaining in the game. Dot Gamble has thrown 49 times and tossed two touchdowns. We'll be back with a kickoff in just a moment. we will kick it off for Purdue. Anthony Carter goes deep. Final home game for the Michigan Wolverines. But he'll play two more at Ohio State next week and in the Rose Bowl January 1st. He'll play a bunch more. Those are his last two for, for Michigan. Walter Pisa getting ready to kick off. The left-footed kick, it'll be a scribber, and they'll keep it away from Anthony Carter. Vincent Bean drops it, falls on him back at the 13. Pretty good downfield coverage for Purdue, and Michigan will get it back. Let's check the lineup now and see if David Hall will come in at quarterback for Steve Smith. Anthony As Carter will probably As stay in the game, and it is David Hall, number seven. He's a junior from Livonia, Michigan, a big kid, 6'5", 203. He's thrown it 14 times so far this year, completed seven, and he'll get to play at least the final 729, or portion of it. He's thrown for one touchdown and has had one intercepted. David Hall, Anthony Carter is still in the ball game. <laughs> Dixon remains in at center, number 69. And off left side, Kerry Smith, number 23. Breaks it loose. Gets a great block. Oh, my gosh. Sim Nelson, number 95, the tight end, gave him an additional six or seven yards with a superb downfield block. He got some great blocks, not only from Sim Nelson, but uh, Anthony Carter, who's done everything this afternoon. You're going to get a chance to see uh, Carter block downfield as well as uh, Sim Nelson. Got a good look there at... Uh, watch Anthony watch Carter. Carter. See, most All-Americans don't give you that kind of effort, particularly late in the football game, 45-21, and Carter's downfield block. Here's Smith again. I get an idea of why Kerry Smith came in with an 8.1 yards per carry man. average. For Kerry Smith, that's 67 yards on seven carries today. He's averaging better than nine yards per carry this afternoon. There's a young freshman running back on this Michigan team in the Rose Bowl, by the way, Michigan 5-5. Five five. Young kid named Thomas Wilcher, who hasn't played yet this year. Folks are excited about him. I guess they're trying to redshirt him, but he has something like a 14-yard per carry average as a high school senior. That's true. He's out of Detroit, and uh, great speed. Uh, people have still been talking about him. He's yet to carry the football, but this Kerry Smith is really impressive. Gary Smith is a junior from Grand Rapids. He was the second leading running back coming in in terms of yards gained behind Lawrence Ricks. Lawrence Ricks with 196 yards today, and Kerry Smith now has 68. Rick Rogers had been listed as the backup, but he had a shoulder injury and did not play against Illinois last week and has not played today. First down, 10. 
Carter is on the bench right now. Gary Smith again. Ray Wallace made the tackle. Smith may go for 100. That's a 20-yard gain. Gives him 87 for the day. Well, we're going to select our most valuable player for Chevrolet. And, of course, we at CBS delighted to be participants in the 12th year of the program in which Chevrolet gives a $1,000 scholarship to both of these schools in honor of the two athletes that Dennis and I will be selecting as most valuable. And that will be coming up a little bit later on. First down in 10, Michigan with a 45-21 lead. Gary Smith for a couple. Brock Spack, number 58, made the tackle. Looking at a couple players for Michigan, and they're obvious. Anthony Carter, Lawrence Ricks, Brian Mercer comes in now in the backfield for Michigan, a sophomore from Cincinnati. So he joins a freshman back there, Eddie Garrett, number 32. Mercer is the tailback in the eye, and he wears number 41. Here's Mercer's first carry in the ball. He got a great block from Garrett, and he's got 10 yards around the left side. Mark Brown gets his 13th tackle of the day. He's a candidate for the MVP. 5.42 remaining. And they're hooping it up in Ann Arbor. Another first down 10 for the Wolverines. left side of the field some of the tumblers are taking off their uh, shirts and uh, pants ready, and getting ready for the rose ball weather there's anthony carter that's at the left side of the field here's a handoff to mercer again to the 15 yard line the kids down at the left end zone are sunning in 35 degree weather right now take a look at this <laughs> These are members of the Michigan Tumbling Team. Yeah. And it spells out Rose Bowl. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Ain't it fun to be a winner? 4.53 to go in the game. 45-21. Second down, eight. Wolverines. Pitch out, Brian Mercer, Garrett in front. And he's down to the 10-yard line. That'll be two yards short of the first down as Don Anderson makes the tackle. Brian Mercer, a 6'2", 200-pound sophomore from Cincinnati. Was out most of last year with a bruised kidney. And now Kerry Smith, having rested for a couple of plays, will come back in. Number 64, Jerry DiOrio and Bo. Glenn E. Bo Sheffeckler. Did you ever call him Glenn? Uh, never. Did you ever call him Bo? A couple times. I call him Bo all the time now, you know, since I've gone. I used to call him Coach all the time. <laughs> Third down, two. Gary Smith did not get the first down. Ray Wallace, number 43, made the tackle. 170 career wins. In 19 years, coaching six at Miami of Ohio. He's in his 20th season. This is his 14th year here. Besides the records, uh, Vern, uh, Bo is just a, a great developer of uh, young men. He's, a, he's the type of guy who can uh, change a man's life around. He, he will develop those discipline uh, uh, goals. He knows how to just develop young men. And I think, you know, without his record, he's just a great coach and a great uh, human being, and I'm glad to be able to have been associated with him. Kerry Smith, number 23, trying for the first down. The tackle made by Mark Brown, and that's his 14th tackle today. Number 59. And I don't know whether Kerry Smith got enough to keep the chains moving. David Hall looking it over, number 7. 312 to go in the game. Michigan will go to Ohio State next week with eight wins and two defeats for the year. And those two defeats came early. Now, let's see if they got enough. Yep. Rich Stringer, number 68. He's another senior. Dave Hall for the season, 7 out of 14. 56 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. 
Brian Mercer back in the uh, lineup. There's going to be a lot of people coming down. We don't want to lose everything. And a look at Craig Dunaway, senior tight end. Got to be a very meaningful experience for these kids to play before 105,000. Really there he really? is. Anthony Carter, Riviera Beach, Florida. <laughs> Two touchdowns for the day. Mercer to the five. Anthony is very reminiscent, isn't he, of Lynn Swan? Yes, he is. He's not as big as Lynn Swan, but uh, the F acrobatic type of receiver, good speed, uh, great concentration. There's a lot of similarities between the two, and I'm sure a lot of people are anticipating Carter having the great pro career that Lynn Swan has, uh, has had. 2.20 remaining in the game. It'll be second down and goal from the five. 45-21, Michigan on top. They slip it up the middle. Eddie Garrett, touchdown. That is his first touchdown in a Michigan uniform. A six-foot, 220-pound bull out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. His first touchdown in a Wolverine uniform ups the count to 51-21. Carter watching now. <laughs> He's a long shot for the Heisman. The battle going on between John Elway, Herschel Walker, Eric Dickerson of SMU, Don Blackledge of Penn State, Tony Easton of Illinois. But Carter is one of the best you'll ever see. The kick is up from Ali Hashashik. That is 72 consecutive extra points. And Hashashik has tied Mike Langtree's record of 113 career extra points. It's 52-21. Back with the kickoff in a moment. Our Chevrolet most valuable player for the University of Michigan. Who else? Anthony Carter. Three catches, 122 yards, a 48-yard touchdown, a 62-yard touchdown. And in his honor, a $1,000 scholarship will go to the General Scholarship Fund at the University of Michigan. And for Purdue, it's junior quarterback Scott Campbell. He's thrown it 49 times, completed 29 for 313 yards today and two touchdowns. And en route, he completed a string of 203 consecutive passes without having it intercepted. That is an NCAA record, breaking the old mark set in 1964 of 198 by Jerry Rome. A $1,000 scholarship given by Chevrolet to Purdue University's General Scholarship Fund in his honor. Lloyd Hawthorne and Steve Griffin are deep to receive the kick of Ali Hajashi. 2.07 to go. The kick taken by Hawthorne at the 10. 15, 20, and down to the 27. Want to thank our usual crew today as well. Dave Yaggy, our statistician up from Dallas. Joe Cash, who has been spotting for the University of Michigan. And once again, nepotism overtook me, and I got my wife working, Nancy, who's been spotting for Purdue. And the guys in the truck, our producer, Gene Harper. Our director, Bob Daly. Thanks for the great pictures down there, guys. Our broadcast associate, Frank Chickenian, Jr. 2.02. And all the great technicians at CBS for the outstanding camera work they've given us here in this Big Ten game that will send Michigan to the Rose Bowl. Scott Marsh is the new quarterback. He's a freshman. Fumble. Marsh makes the recovery. A freshman out of Evansville, Indiana. 6'1", 189 pounds. Another of the 18 freshmen. So Campbell is uh, going to sit the rest of it out with 49 attempts and 29 completions today. Coming up, the WBA Lightweight Championship featuring Ray Boom Boom Mancini versus Duck Koo Kim. Out in Las Vegas, Nevada, an old buddy of mine named Joe Assetti is standing by there to help with the production of that one. And Sugar Ray Leonard will be joined by Tim Ryan and Bill Clancy in Las Vegas. That's after our college scoreboard show. 1.22 remaining in the game. Marsh hands it off. Right side. It goes to Tim Richardson. Number 31. Another freshman and Nate Rogers, a sophomore, makes the tackle for Michigan. 1.10 remaining. It'll be third down. Well, for the 17 kids who have spent four or five years, in some cases, here at Michigan, what a moment it must have been for Bo Schembechler as well. His 171st career win, his 131st at Michigan. His last seven teams have gone to bowls. This will be number eight, 
The only reason there haven't been more is because they weren't eligible back in those days when Dennis Franklin was the quarterback. Only one team could go there. Well, you guys would have gone to a bunch. <laughs> well, we missed out, but uh, you're right. The goalposts are getting ready to come down. Don Canham, the athletic director here at uh, Michigan, hates to see this. Hates it. 21 seconds to go, and they got the crowd coming on the field on the left side. There are 15 seconds to go, and I don't know they're going to get another playoff. For Anthony Carter, Lawrence Ricks, Bo Schembechler, for Dennis Franklin, indeed, a graduate of the University of Michigan, and there they go, the celebration. In 11 years, Michigan can prepare for an Ohio State game without worrying about whether or not it means the Rose Bowl or a bowl. They will be in Pasadena. And it's now just whether it's Arizona State or Washington, regardless of which team, Dennis Franklin, that ought to be a great football game. Yes, it should be. And uh, it's got to be a good feeling to go down in, to Columbus and uh, not feel like, you know, have that extra uh, pressure about having to win the football game. I'm sure they're going to prepare the same way and they're going to go down there, Michigan that is, and want to win the game. But the fact that it's so difficult to win in Columbus and uh, I've been down there and uh, trying to play in front of that crowd is uh, something else. Well, we're live in Ann Arbor right now. We had a crowd of 105,271 today, the 48th consecutive crowd in excess of 100,000 people here at Michigan Stadium. The band will be going to the Rose Bowl as well as Michigan rolls up a 52-21 victory. And we have been proud to bring it to you, Anthony Carter and Steve Smith on CBS, along with a kid named Lawrence Ricks, who this afternoon rushed for 196 yards. That was a personal best. He had rushed for 177 last week in a 16-10 win over Illinois. And today he wound up with 196. Steve Smith threw it nine times and completed 13 for 185. Two touchdowns, both to Anthony Carter. Testing! Te and Carter, of course, as you hear the testing, <laughs> caught it for 48 Our for the first touchdown to back in the first quarter and 62 yards here in quarter number three. Michigan jumped out to a 17 to nothing lead before Purdue was able to get on the board and cut it to 17-7. And then the turnovers really hampered a, a, a Purdue team. Dennis, it was moving the ball so well in the first quarter. That's right. It, that's the difference, uh, Vern. Uh, Purdue could move the football, but they turned the ball over four times. They gave Michigan excellent field position, and Michigan's just too good of a football team. You can't hand them uh, good field positions and allow them uh, easy uh, uh, touchdowns. And uh, actually, uh, Michigan was really uh, not that impressive uh, in the second half. They didn't move the ball. The first two or three times they got the ball in the second half, they, it was three downs and a kick. And uh, so they weren't that impressive. They got some good turnovers in the second half. And other than that, they didn't play it well. 52-21, the final. We'll be back with more NCAA Today after this message. with Bo Schembechler and Jim Brandstatter. Brought to you by the General Motors Corporation, the Pontiac Motor Division, General Motors Parts, the General Tire and Rubber Company, and by Budweiser. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Michigan Replay. The Wolverines defeated Purdue 52 to 21 on Saturday, and that means Michigan wins the Big Ten Championship and a trip to the Rose Bowl. And, Bo, on Saturday when I was 
Leaving the stadium, a guy looked at me and he said, hey, can you get Bo to smile this week? <laughs> I thought I smiled all through the season. Well, apparently you are just a sourpuss on this show, I guess, all year long, and now you got a championship. Jim, don't ever uh, believe in your critics. <laughs> you know, I don't, and I don't want you to either. No, I'm not uh, uh, listening, or I don't even listen to the critics. But this was a fan. And I wondered where you got the idea you didn't smile. Because I, I thought you know. smiled a lot. I don't know. I Maybe it's because I don't have big teeth or something. <laughs> I don't show her. I don't know. I can't. You're uh, pretty pleased, though, on this day, aren't you? Well, I think, um, you know, winning the championship and uh, going back to the Rose Bowl with this ball club is going to be a lot of fun. Um, I, I felt that uh, it would be a good football team. Um, we started off rather poorly and, and uh, didn't know, you know, what direction we'd take. And then we ran off a string of uh, seven straight conference victories and won the title, and, and uh, we're all very pleased. But, Jim, we got to keep in mind that titles are fine and Rose Bowls are great, but uh, we're still going to finish this season in Columbus, Ohio. Before we get to Columbus, Ohio and the Buckeyes, let's talk about that victory over Purdue. And really, it started out, I thought things were coming apart. On third down, they hit a big one, and you're in trouble. Well, uh, they didn't hit a big one. We just didn't tackle. And uh, really, Jim, I, at that point, I wondered whether my defense was ready to play or not when we missed that many tackles on a long yardage situation. And here in their first drive, uh, they're moving rather effectively, benching their big tight end and, and uh, did a great job of catching the football. But uh, here uh, we get the break we need. They caught the pass and uh, we tackled him hard and got a fumble. Um, they lost the ball four times on fumbles. You can't fumble a football in a, in a game and lose it four times and expect to hang in here. We came out uh, running and uh, picked up a couple of first downs. Uh, Larry Ricks ran the counter play there for uh, eight yards and then uh, off tackle here. And, and we moved right to midfield and get in just inside um, Purdue territory when uh, Smith fades the pass here and goes down the middle to Anthony Carter, makes a fine catch and in for the touchdown. And that was a good start. And that was a first down play after he having kept it on the ground all the way in that first Well, drive. really, we kept it on the ground uh, for two first downs and then uh, went to the air. That was a first down play. Here's a third short, uh, very well executed play. Didn't make, uh, was very happy. Faked into the line and dunked that ball to the tight end uh, for a first down. Um, <clears throat> This youngster is a very fine quarterback and uh, does a good job. Uh, we got a little pressure on him, not as much as you'd like, but it's awfully hard to do nowadays. That sack by Thompson was the really only time you stopped him in the first half on defense. They right, stopped themselves right. the rest of the time. Uh, here's a play breaking right up. Uh, this trap play uh, broke right up the middle and down near their 20-yard line. Larry Ricks had a big day, and mostly on those traps. Well, he hit uh, the off-tackle play in the traps and did a great job on Here's the big play. We had a third and long here, and Anthony uh, skitters uh, <laughs> out of bounds there for a first down. And then uh, Ricks hits up the middle here for the touchdown. And we go on top 14 to nothing, which is uh, in a game as important as this one made us feel real good. The way their <clears throat> offense is moving on you, though, did you, you, I'm sure you didn't feel like this was well in hand because you said they were moving on you and you couldn't really be confident that the, this was going to turn out no, easy. No, <clears throat> Here's another fumble. Like, we did tackle them hard once they caught the ball and coughed it up, and, and uh, that was an occasion where it happened here. And that was, although it looked close, it was a legitimate uh, fumble. Here Smith rolls out, and hits Dan Rice into the flat. We're down to their, inside their 15-yard line. But, um, you know, we could put it away here if we could get this ball in the end zone, but we got stopped and had to settle for the field goal. And at this point in the game, uh, early in the second period, we're on top 17 tonight. And Haji Sheik sets a career field goal record at Michigan with that one. So. Yeah, he's been, a, he's been a great kicker for us, no question. Here they uh, throw to the fullback out of the backfield, and, and uh, Purdue really has an excellent passing attack. And they, they do a good job. They throw to their backs a lot. Um, <clears throat> that's discouraging when you, <laughs> when you have them sacked back there and they get out of there and complete the ball. But this... Um, uh, Campbell was a very, very fine quarterback. <clears throat> Here he throws down the left side. They're down to our 12-yard line. And eventually come down and go in to score with their tailback uh, diving in for a touchdown, I think. 17-7 <laughs> <laughs> now. Uh, 
And they're moving on you. This really, I wasn't confident about this one at all watching it. Well, uh, I'm always confident if I know I can move the ball. Here Smith goes over the middle to uh, Dunaway for a first down. That was on a second down long situation. And here in your, you get a back view of a third and two play in which Ricks hits the crease up the middle and uh, goes for a big yardage on a play that normally is designed to get you a first down. Uh, now here we, uh, we threw out here and really we didn't, we didn't run a real good cut and we shouldn't have thrown the ball the way we threw it. And, you know, that's one of our few interceptions since the first uh, two, three games. And uh, it was just a badly executed play. But then you come back and get the big play right again from your defense. Right. And you'll notice there that that is the middle guard, uh, Sensich, who chased down the receiver. Now, a lot of times you get guys who are rushing the passer and they just, when the ball's thrown, they relax. You try to teach these guys to take off and run because there's so much short passing, you hit them from behind and, uh, and make plays as he did there. Here's Ricks finding another big crease on the trap play uh, off tackle. And Kerry Smith, who I thought did an excellent job, I thought he scored there, but uh, I think on the replay he might have been a little bit short. Actually, it looked like a pretty good call. You can see how close that ball is. Smith sneaks in, and, um, and we go ahead 24-7. to 7. You're feeling confident mm -hmm. now because they've really been giving you the football all day long and they continue to do it, which is so, so surprising. Well, and they can't stop us, Jim. And, you know, as long as you can move here, they give it to us again, which is uh, awfully nice of them. <laughs> and, uh, and that puts us in a position to really get up on top here in the, uh, in the first half. Uh, this is Ricks again. Notice how hard he runs here, Jim. That's, uh, that's not your ordinary back that can break tackles like that and do what he does. Here's the first and ten. Uh, Smith back to pass, goes up over the middle of Dunaway, and they call pass interference at the one-yard line, and uh, that was snug. <laughs> uh, you know, I uh, maybe he saw something I didn't see. I don't know, but, uh, uh, you know, I will take it and figure and uh, they'll get us sooner or later anyway. And here's a two-point play in which um, we brought Anthony in motion from the sideline, and they were in man coverage, and the guy had to run clear across to take him and couldn't stay with him. And, so we go in at halftime 31-7. Now, did you feel, okay, we've got it in hand now, or did you think maybe um, Purdue, because they moved the ball so well, well, could come back on us? Frankly, I thought we had it in hand and uh, had control of the game. Unfortunately, I must have reflected that to the team because the third <laughs> period we played like we didn't want to win the game, you know. And uh, But... Uh, other than the third period, I thought we played good football. <laughs> we will be back and we'll take a look at that third and fourth quarters when Michigan finally wrapped up their Big Ten championship and a trip to the Rose Bowl, so stay with us. The Wolverines were ahead of Purdue at halftime, big 31-7. And in the third quarter, and you alluded it to, to it before we left, they came out and, uh, to quote a famous coach that I know, <laughs> laid an egg. <laughs> well, uh, we, our first uh, three possessions, we didn't even get a first down. And, uh, you know, that's uh, discouraging uh, to a coach. Um, I, we were fourth and three, fourth and six, <laughs> fourth and seven. You know, we just we didn't move the ball at all. And, and our defense really played some decent football in that in that half. Here's a draw play off the uh, shotgun that uh, broke for a first down uh, into our sideline. And um, they're down in our territory now, and Campbell's under pressure, and we get him sacked. Um, I really thought our defense uh, in some of the series here played pretty well. Once Third again. and 12, they came over here and hit into the sideline uh, uh, for a uh, uh, close to a first down. And then this is a key play. They go back to pass, and they... they thrown this little swing to get the first down and they threw to Gray here and uh, Giergeis tackled him short of the first down and our, we stopped him. And there's another case of the defense bending but not really breaking. Right. And finally getting him stopped but uh, then our uh, offense uh, didn't move. Here he throws out and uh, slide again to Gray, the tailback and, and they keep uh, chipping away at us. Uh, Gray, we miss a tackle here and Gray um, runs uh, nearly for a first down. Here's a fourth and four situation. Campbell back to throw again and throws over the middle and hits the fullback this time. And uh, it's that type of, uh, of a drive going right now. 
A lot like uh, Illinois, yeah. Illinois' little one. But this was the key play when he caught uh, Benson the tight end down the middle, and that put him down inside our 10-yard line and gives him an opportunity uh, to score now. And that was one of the longest passes you've had thrown against you in, I think, what, five yeah. or six games? Now, here's the bootleg on third and goal, and um, and he hits Benson for the touchdown, and, and uh, that's the type of thing that... Uh, shouldn't happen but it did uh, we come back here now and Smith throws to Bean on the first down uh, at the 42 yard line in Purdue territory and uh, we're putting together a drive now ourselves this is Rick's coming off tackle you notice how he kind of hesitates and gets into the hole to see the blocking take place and then takes off and then uh, Larry goes in there and and he fumbled his ball and uh, got hurt while he did it I didn't see that heavy hit in there, but Larry <laughs> tells me it was in there, so I'll, I'll listen to it. On a third and ten, uh, Campbell threw a pass he should never have thrown uh, over the middle there, and Marion Body intercepted for us, and we're down to the five-yard line. But that pass interception, really, because you got some pressure on him, which you hadn't done a lot in the first half. Well, Jim, when you find people getting pressure on passes, you let me know how they've done it, will you? We had, they haven't sacked our quarterback in five games. Uh, it just, it's hard to do. It's just hard to get that kind of pressure. Kerry Smith scored that touchdown. And he had another good day uh, coming in with, uh, and uh, actually, uh, here's an interception again by uh, Johnny Lott this time. Probably another pass he shouldn't have thrown. That's right. He went, uh, that one he went deep and he went into the wind and uh, just threw it short. And that's what happened. And here Steve throws down to, um, Anthony and uh, we had this juggle play worked out here. <laughs> now, you, now you, the amazing thing about this play is that Anthony always keeps himself in position to make some kind of an attempt to catch the ball. Look at his, look at his body here. You see, most guys that have been off balance and been falling down or something, but this guy is phenomenal. He, and and you of course coached all that. Well, I've worked with Anthony <laughs> over, over the last four years on that, but. Um, He's just an absolute uh, motor genius, a, a guy who can just uh, always seem to be in position to make the right play. And that's what he's done. Here, uh, Purdue moves again, and uh, they uh, hit a curl pass, and they're in our territory, and run a draw play back into the uh, sideline here that gets good yardage, and they're down inside their 25-yard line, uh, ready to score again. You're up big at this point. A lot of the kids that are seniors that really haven't had an opportunity to play are in there. Uh, yeah, well, that's true. I mean, we've uh, uh, hopefully we got a lot of them in. I, uh, I think we did, uh, particularly defensively. I don't know whether we did offense. Here's uh, Kerry Smith breaking outside. Um, this youngster has an amazing knack of uh, reading the blocking at the hole and being at the right place at the right time and making the right cuts. And here he is again, makes a good move and gets outside. <laughs> Uh, Bean gets a good block for him that picks up eight or ten extra yards for him. Alex Agassi called him smooth, and I guess that's the only way yeah. you can look at it. Yeah, here's a trap up the middle on a second down on the six-yard line, and uh, and uh, Eddie Garrett goes in for the touchdown. That closes out the score. 52-21, to 21, Michigan wins. You go to the Rose Bowl. A lot of people thought there might have been an emotional letdown coming off Illinois, which was such an emotional game, and yet... You came out and really took it to them early. Well, I, I think, uh, you know, our seniors played their last game in Michigan Stadium. The championship was hanging in the balance. Um, I thought it would be a tougher game. I thought it would be a fourth quarter game. Maybe it would have been if they hadn't turned the ball over so frequently to us. But um, taking everything into consideration, it was a good win. You know, we got the championship sewed up and, and uh, feel real good about it. We'll be back in a minute and have some thoughts on... The 1982 season, which isn't over yet, but already a championship in the bag. Stay with us. When the Michigan Wolverines started the 1982 season, they opened with a win over Wisconsin, then they lost two straight. You were one and two, and everybody thought maybe... Bo wasn't kidding at the beginning of the year when he said we were going to be in a struggle. But then you beat everybody, and you really only had one close game. How do you characterize this team in this season up to this point? Well, it's, it's, um, it, it reminds me of the 1980 team 
um, where we started out and lost a couple of games and then uh, came back to win the championship. Um, it has a tremendous character and a great group of seniors, a great leadership. And um, the secret to success in football, as I see it, now, you know, that's my opinion, is do you get better from week to week? And if you have quality players on your team and they continually work to get better, the chances are if you, if you start to win, you're going to have a chance to have that thing mushroom and you'll continue to win. And that's what happened to us this year. Have you improved, do you think, over the year, more than, say, some of your teams in the past from when you started to this point? Oh, I wouldn't say that. I mean, uh, I think it's uh, at least as much, but I, I don't know whether it's improved uh, more. The thing about it is we've only been in that one really tough game, you know, and uh, I think we'll find out next week again we're going to be in a tough game, I guarantee you that. You talked about one of the keys to any team's success, and I know that you are a firm believer in this is your seniors. and. Uh, upcoming is the annual football bust at the University of Michigan, and that's the place where alumni, friends of the university, and friends of the football program can honor those seniors. Well, that's where, um, you know, they get their M ring. Uh, I'm wearing one of those M rings. Jim, <laughs> I don't have mine because to have one. I got fat, and afterwards it won't fit anymore. Well, you ought to get stretched. That's a very prestigious I ring. I know, I know. I actually and, ought uh, to lose weight. You know, they've been given that ring for over 50 years. Yeah, the same ring. Uh, Jerry Ford has a ring exactly like that. And uh, all of our seniors are presented those rings, and they get to say a few things. And it's a great banquet. It is a great athletic banquet. For those of you who are interested in going to that banquet, it will be Tuesday, November 30th, at the Renaissance Center in Detroit. For ticket information, call area code 313-879-6023 or area code 313-682-2162. And we will be right back momentarily and take a look at that one last game on the schedule. Just happens to be Ohio State. Stay with us. Quarterback Mike Tomczak started slowly in his sophomore year at Ohio State after one season as understudy to Arch Leister, but a one-game benching pushed Mike to reach his potential. The Buckeyes started on a win streak when Mike returned to the lineup against Illinois, and Tom Zack was 13 for 17 against Minnesota. Tim Spencer is a typical Buckeye back. At 6'2", 217, Spencer has the size and 4'3 speed, and he's joined some exclusive company when he became the only OSU back besides Archie Griffin to gain more than 1,000 yards in two consecutive seasons. Wide receiver Gary Williams fits the classic mold, too, a flyer with great hands, Williams set an NCAA record by catching passes in 43 straight games. But that isn't the only thing that Williams does well. He is a strong downfield blocker and is the man who usually springs Spencer when Tim turns the corner. Cedric Anderson is the kind of wide receiver you don't find often at Ohio State. A man who can shake the secondary and find the open seam, Cedric has great hands and loves to catch the football on the fly. Defensively, Jerome Foster at 270 pounders, the man who anchors the front line at OSU. His improvement has helped the Buckeye defense cut opposing yardage by 50% in 1982. Sean Gale, brother of tailback Jimmy Gale, is a Jack Tatum type in the secondary. A crushing hitter, Gale has jolted the ball loose from opposing receivers and forced fumbles all through the year. And the November 20th matchups at Ohio Stadium should be very interesting. In Columbus, I'm Lee Velicides, reporting for Michigan Replay. The Buckeyes and Wolverines uh, next week, and for the first time in, I think, since 1971, it doesn't mean anything as far as championships go. Now, don't get mad, because you intimidate me. <laughs> but anyway, Marion Boddy, I think, put it best after the game. He said... I don't think it'd be a Big Ten championship if we didn't beat Ohio State. Is that the way every kid Well, I, I, I don't know about that, but, you know, this is the greatest football rivalry in the country. I don't think there's any question about that. I think Ohio State is the best football team that we will have met so far this year. I think they're better than Notre Dame. I think they're better than UCLA. I think they're playing better football than those two teams. So um, we figure it's going to be a great game, but we're a better team than we were when we played them uh, as well. So 
uh, it'll be a great football game because they're they're a great team. There's no question. And emotionally, it'll be a Michigan Ohio State game. Oh right? yeah. Hey, don't worry about that, Jim. <laughs> it's the one we live for every week, every year. We look forward to this week. It'll be um, it'll be an emotional week, uh, and the preparation will be crisp and sharp. And uh, let's hope we have a great game in Columbus. All righty. Please join us when we look at Ohio State and Michigan next time right here on Michigan Replay. Michigan Replay has been brought to you by the General Motors Corporation, the Pontiac Motor Division, General Motors Parts, the General Tire and Rubber Company, and by Budweiser. Thank <laughs> you.